Good morning and welcome to Kaleida High School, where today WSN brings you the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Match. We will have two semifinal matches and a finals match for you today. In our opening match, the Kaleida Wildcats, Coach Mary Quartercrats team, will match up with the Rough Riders from St. Mary's, and that would be Kelly Yoder's team. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to do play-by-play. -play. And alongside Dart Evergold, Dart, uh, interesting matchup, one from the PCL, one from the Western Buckeye League. Yeah, it certainly should be. And, I mean, you look at Clyde coming in at 6-1 and one now after winning this morning and uh, St. Mary's 7-4. and four. So, you know, we watched some good volleyball already today, and, you know, I expect this to be a good match as well. Clyde Wildcats got here with a win over Bath. In fact, we saw some of that very impressively, 25-15, 25-14. St. Mary's was in the other gym today, and they had a great match with the 5-1 Fairview Apaches team. St. Mary's lost the opening set 25-14, came back to win 25-17, and the third set went 26-24 in favor of the Rough Riders, and hence we have this matchup for you here in the semifinals. On the left of your screen, wearing black and uh, the maroon colors would be Kaleida, and serving first, wearing the blue and gold, is St. Mary's, and their libero will serve first. That's Ashley Nuss. And her serve goes long, and the first point goes to Kaleida. And you look at this Kaleida team. I mean, like I said, they come in at 6-1. You know, you look at the Romez girl, number 10 out there, 74 kills coming into this game. And I mean, she's six foot two listed. And uh, she looks all of six foot two, I'll tell you that. That opening kill for St. Mary's will go to Bryn Clark. And we are tied at one. We'll allow Lily Rammel to serve, one of the setters for this uh, St. Mary's team. Has 116 sets prior to today's action. Assist, I guess we should say. Kill was by Ryder Nienberg. And the ball's pushed over by Reagan Putoff. And the libero will bang it over Maddie Underfirth. Set. This kill will be Sylvia White Weekert. Good save right there. And a really heads up play pushed over by Maria Girding. She has 182 assists in the seven matches that have been played. Actually, we should say six because our stat page went through six matches, not this morning's. Kaleida's only loss this year was their opening season match to Bluffton. That was a 3-2 match, and they have been on a roll since then. Set. Oh, Hit. good dig. Yeah, it certainly was. Here's the libero going to bump it over, Maddie Underfirth. Clark sets again. That's tipped to an open area and put away for a point by Audra Clark. Nice job by Clark right there just to find the open spot right there where everybody just kind of cleared out, expecting him to spike the ball down, and she just tapped it over. And to serve will be Sylvia Weekert. Sylvia's a junior. Tipped over by the setter girding. Here's Libero doing the set this time. Girding sets again. There's Romez, tips the ball in the middle of the floor, and Malia has a point. Back and forth we go, opening set here. This will bring number 13, uh, Adeline Huber, into the game, freshman. It's always interesting to watch volleyball. When you look at them, and you expect them to just hammer it down, and then they just get that little tap over to the empty spots a lot of times. It would be illegal contact as the pass was difficult for Audra Clark to handle. Goes 4-2, Kaleida. Here's the libero going to play it over. Nuss, set. And Huber shots blocked at the net by Clark. Audra's having a nice opening series of points here. Set again, and Clark again, and missed the sideline. It's 5-2. I'm always a little bit curious when you get these invitationals. You, know, you set, you play, then you set. St. Mary's played three difficult sets in a different gym, uh, obviously right here in the community, but traveled over here a little bit. And just kind of curious how they will start after you know, kind of being setting, uh, setting for a while. Here's Romez, and she hits off a blocker for a point at 6-2. There you're right, Mark. And especially since you're playing, you played in a different gymnasium, then you come over and play in this gymnasium. Yep. So it's a different setting as well. All the way around, you know, and like you said, they had a little bit of time there in between, you know, to just sit and kind of contemplate a little bit through what their first match was like. And tipping the ball once again to an open area is Audra Clark. Excuse me, not Audra Clark, Bryn Clark, six foot senior, breaks that string and makes it 6 3.
Good serve, but also a good save by Maria Girding. Here's the set. That's blocked by Romez. Yeah, like I said, that's six foot two frame, and she's all that six foot two, that's for sure. Able to get up high over the top of the net. You know, Clyda, though, they had they had a little bit of time in between theirs first set, you know, first match as well to sit. Good pass up to the front. Tipped over that time by Steger. And there's a hit from the back row. Actually from behind the 10-foot line, not from the back row. Makes it 8-3. And Romez will serve again. It looked like St. Mary's a little vulnerable right there in the middle. Set. And that ball's killed by Matty Steger, the sophomore. 8-4. So 28 kills coming into this game and not counting what she did this morning. And in the serve will be Ellie Kraft. Ellie has 10 aces on the season. She is third as a tie between really Rammel and Bryn Clark with 16 apiece. Float serve. And Romez, or not Romez, excuse me, that was uh, Adeline Huber hits it off a blocker to score. St. Mary's has served four times, has not scored a point yet off of service. Which is really surprising. Overpass just a bit, and what do we got? Somebody from uh, St. Mary's in the net makes it 10-4, and we are going to get our first time out today. That will go to St. Mary's. They trail 10-4. to You're watching High School Volleyball on WSN. Our scoreboard today is sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. 10-4 early on, hence the timeout by Kelly Yoder of St. Mary's. You've officiated a lot of volleyball, Mark, uh -huh. and it's interesting the rules in volleyball that you really don't know that much about. I mean, there's so many of them that are just, you know, you just see them watch them out there hitting the ball and batting it back and forth over the net, but there's so many other things. That's blocked at the net. I think Sylvia Graber got it. Either way, coming out of a timeout, St. Mary's scores. Let's see if they can get point off of service here as Graber will serve. Sierra's a senior. 84 kills for her today before today's action. And she's going to get an ace. That gives her uh, six aces, and uh, not sure what she did in the first match th today, but. Sierra Graber, her team is down to four here after the timeout. Got some points going here. This is going to be hit by Nieberg, played by the libero Nuss. And not able to play it out of the net, though, was Huber. Good diving attempt in the back row, but not able to save it out of the net, and it's back to 10-7 as they've cut the lead in half from the six that it was in a timeout. It's tipped across by Huber. And from the back row, a hit. And really good job oh. placing the ball by Maria Girding. It was a great placement right there. Yep. Just got it right on the outside of the line there, and then somebody won't... You know, get some of my hands on it. The liberos, of course, very, or the setters, of course, very adept at uh, set, 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 and then finally push the ball to an open spot. That point's going to go to Sylvia Weekert. It's 11-8. It looked like it almost a miss hit on that one a little bit. Kind of went off her hand a little bit strange, but found the spot that she needed. Here's the senior, actually, Nuss to serve. She has eight aces on the season. Girding sets. Tipped across by Underfirth. And hit almost for a point. Thought it was going to get down by Weaker. Not so. Underfirth again. Whitney. And Clark. But ball's played by Girding. And they weren't quite able to get it over the net. Sure, but the kill was very good. Pass wasn't able to get the ball to an area where the setter could do much with it. I noticed, Mark, since that timeout by St. Mary's that they've they, 
you sewed up that little middle there that they were having a lot of balls drop down in that area right there. They're starting to cover that a little bit better. And breaking a string of points for St. Mary's has scored five out of six is Whitney Unver first kill. Makes it 12-9. The other semifinal is being played in the opposite gym, so we're not sure who our next matchup will be. Somebody will play Liberty Benton, who won here in a quarterfinal match a little while ago, and that's going to fall. Oh, we got somebody in the net. She's got her hand in the net. I didn't mention our two officials today. Up on the stand is Jack Link, and on the floor is Ann Ellerbrock. Makes it 12-10. So good run by St. Mary's being down 10 forward and make it 12 10 now. Hit by Nieberg. Oh. And they're going to scramble around and save it as Romez puts it across the net. Free balled over. Clark again. And Brenton's going to get a kill. Makes it 12 11. St. Mary's roaring back. Much like how their season has gone, at one point they were 1 and 3. And went on a really good roll, winning 3-0, four consecutive matches, and then lost to New Bremen, which it's a very talented yeah. New Bremen which, team again. There's an ace. Talk that up to, who is that, Sophie Oyer. Yeah, that's no, no crime to lose no. to New Bremen, that's for sure. Parentally a state uh, participant. Romez hits. Boy, did she hit that one down, 13-12. Yes, She's got those long arms push. She used every bit of it. Got up there above that net and just slammed it. Very talented basketball player as well is Malia. Good serve. It's played over by Putoff. Underfirth hits. Clark tipped it, but not able to get the ball down and Gomez hits that one, but she hits it to the back row to Graber. And Unverfirth's going to get a kill. Oh, they chase it down. Not quite able to make a good play. Good effort by St. Mary's. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, she went a long way to get that just to get hands on it at all. Well, I, I'm a fan of a good libero play. Ashley Nuss ran a long way for that one. Maddie Unverfirth is the libero for the Kaleida Wildcats. Clark hit that one really well. They're going to keep it alive. That they do. Good play out of the net. Bumped over by Nuss. Set. Underfirth hits. And tip, but not able to find the open spot is Sylvia Weekert. And it's 15-12. After being tied at 12, the last three points have gone the way of the Wildcats. And for service will be Ryland Nienberg. And the Wildcats doing a nice job of using the, their big girl as the uh, decoy on that one there. Talk about big girl putting that one away is Bryn Clark. 15-13. Bryn's a senior, goes six foot. It looked like Clyde was just going to run away with this when they started out, but St. Mary's making a nice match out of it. That they have as Weekert will serve. Here's Sylvia. And Sylvia will chalk up an ace. Second for her team in the opening set. Came into the, into this morning with seven aces. That was a good serve as well. Dove was across the net. Romez, but she hits it to Nuss. That's going to be a kill. Chalk that one up to Reagan put off, and we're back to 15 all. Well, quickly things can change, and then I'll tell you what. We talked about that, you know, before. You know, this is a game of momentum and, and intensity, and it can change at any minute. Three consecutive points. That was Good blocked. dig. Yeah. And I think I had a double hit contact called. And for the first time, 
St. Mary's is going to take a lead, and with that, Kaleida is going to take a timeout. We're pleased to announce a new pricing for the WSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WSN from anywhere at any time. You can sign up today at apple.wsn.tv. It's also available on Roku and Apple TV. Now, however I say that, Roku or Roku, the, <laughs> the girls here at the station make fun of me, and so we're going to just kind of slip by. Every time I say that, I'm going to say it different today. That's right. Kelsey Beimer's down here to my right, and as soon as she hears what I said, she'll come down and tell me I said it wrong. But, uh, I, it's just kind of the I way do, it is. I do the same thing. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I got one of those. I got, and I, I got one of those. And they, well, anyway, I got one of those, and I got one of those in my camper even. So four consecutive points have gone the way of St. Mary's, and they have taken a 16-15 lead, and each team has used a timeout. And that will allow Sylvia Weekert to serve again. St. Mary's with a 12-5 turnaround here. Good serve deep in the corner. Gomez hits it over. Set. And just tipping the ball oh. in the open area is Sierra Graber. And the run continues. Nice job by that young lady. Just go up with one hand. It looked like she was going to yep. slap I got, it. I got the call wrong. We're going to go the other way with it. It was called. Uh, the contact was incorrectly done, so we're tied at 16. It did break the string. I was so busy writing the score down. I didn't uh, catch the officials. They haven't changed it on the board yet. Yeah, I think they will because they've taken the serve over and given it to, to Kaleida, or I shouldn't say given it, awarded it to Kaleida. Let's see what happens with the scoreboard. It should be 16 all, I believe. Here's the set. Clark swings and hit it wide. And I think... Uh, there it goes. Yeah, Coach Cordacrax was pointing out that the score was incorrect and the officials have made that change. Helpful coaching. Yes, you it know, is. Yeah, you know, just, we're just being, They're paying attention. It's our home <laughs> facility. We're just helping you out here. Whitney Underfirth will serve. She's a senior. Most players does a little bit of everything. 22 kills, 11 aces, 8 assists, 41 digs. Those very valuable seniors on your team. Graber hit that one. Oh, that nice. Blocked block. and blocked for a point. Wow. Graber got it. Sent it right back. And serve will be Bryn Clark with a score tied at 17. Girding sets. Romez tips the open area and gets a point for her efforts. 18-17 Wildcats. And back to that area again that seems to be vulnerable for St. Mary's. They kind of spread the, their players out, leave that little middle right there open. Malia Romez will serve. Tip to an open area. Set. Romez from behind the 10-foot line. Good play by Girding at the net. Romez will set that ball. And then finding the back part of the court is Olivia Meyer. Her team leads by two. There's not a lot of room back here, but she seemed to find it. Good serve. Mm -hmm. That ball's hit off a blocker, I believe. It was. Patty Steger had to hit, went off a blocker's hand at the net, and the point was awarded to her team. And Ellie Kraft will serve. Good serve by Kraft, and she will get an ace. Ellie is 11th of the year, and we're tied at 19. That was a great serve there. You can see that downward movement on that ball as soon as it came off her hand. If you can get it that close to the top of the net, make a dive like that. Turning sets. That ball's hit off a blocker by Adeline Huber. 2019 Wildcats. Pretty much the way we expected between these two teams. Back and forth we go. Girding to serve. 
And she will set from the back row. And she gets an ace. Her team has a, a couple of them here in the opening set. She has one now. Clive tried to get on a roll here and finish this off. And she missed the sideline. Good effort. Missed the sideline. 21-20. See our Graber's turn to serve once we get our subs in the game. Sylvia Weekhart came in. Graber. Good serve. Here's Gerding set. It was by Huber. And pounded oh, away yeah. at the net. Look out. Riley Nieberg. 22 20. That's the kind you see coming over, and your eyes get yeah. real big, and you say, oh boy. With that lollipop coming across the net. We're going to get a timeout by St. Mary's. They're second as they. Trail by a couple, and Dar, I'm looking down here. It's the Richard Quartercracks Court. In your days in Putnam County, you yeah. had many times you dealt with Mr. Quartercracks, didn't you? Several times, and i tell you what, don't be in a hurry if you're writing for a newspaper. <laughs> I'll tell you what, because, you know, once he went in the locker room, you waited and waited for him to come out. Yeah. Now, I will give Richard a lot of credit, though. When he did come out, and when he would talk and talk, and he would tell yep. you everything, you know. Great, great interview afterwards, but yeah, you, you didn't want to be in a hurry to go home, that's for sure. <laughs> One of the all-time great high school basketball coaches in Ohio and, of course, in our particular area, the Cordocrats, and a great book written by him, too, oh, as well, yeah. if you have a chance to pick that one up and read it. That's really good. Well, in this particular situation, I though, see my old boss down there on the yeah. sideline, too, from the Putnam County Sentinel. There you go. Charlie Warnerman standing down there. Two-point lead in favor of Kaleida, trying to get the opening set. St. Mary's has burned both timeouts. Kaleida has used just one. Here's the serve by Huber. Run slide. And just bumped over, and they're oh, going to get a that. point now over it by Riley Nieberg as she just got it off a of blocker's hand and got it to fall. Adlin Huber will serve again, the freshman. Two points away from opening set for Kaleida. Set. Nieberg shots blocked. I think Sylvia Weekert got it. There were two of them there yeah, on the double block. I agree. I think it was Weekert that really had the block on that one. There's Ashley Nuss to serve with a team trailing by a couple. And the serve goes into the net, and we are at set point in the opening set for the Kaleida Wildcats. And with that, Malia Romez pops up off the bench, and it's her turn to play in the front row as Olivia Meyer will serve. Olivia Meyer with three aces so far this season. Nuss, here's the set, and they go to Clark. She has to roll it across, and she gets a point. A little miscommunication on the part of the Kaleida Wildcats trying to figure out who was supposed to play the ball, and St. Mary stays alive with really Rambles to serve. And really serves it out, and our opening set will go the way of the Kaleida Wildcats. 25-22, set two coming up after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at Kaleida High School, the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament. Opening set in this semifinal match was won by the Kaleida Wildcats, 25-22. We found out during the break that our second semifinal match will be between Rain Trace and Liberty Benton. Wayne Trace with a three-set win over North Central. That will be our second match today, and then we'll be back for the final match as well. But right now, we have another set here to play, at least one more set here to play between St. Mary's and Kaleida. We were talking about before this started, you know, this gymnasium, this school, 20 years old, you said, and I, I just cannot picture that. Yeah, it is. Adam Huber told me that as the athletic director here, that this gym is, will now be in its 20th year. It just, it, it's a wonderful facility. In basketball, volleyball, it's, it's a wonderful facility. Um, at some point today, I'm going to get Jacob O'Neill to take a shot at that cat across the yes. floor. 
That is one of my favorite all-time mascots. Can't do it now, but at some point we'll get Jacob to get a shot of that for you because it is one of my favorite gym uh, paintings of all time, and uh, we'll get a shot of that at some point. Kaleida started out with a big lead in the opening set. They got it up to 10-4, to four, and then the St. Mary's came back, took a lead. Kaleida went on a roll and eventually won the set, and they're going to open up with a service ace by Adeline Huber to open up set number two. And that was textbook right there. That served there right down the line, hit right on the line, had enough it was downward motion. You couldn't do anything with that. Any part of the ball hits any part of the line, it's in. That's what happened right there. That ball's blocked at the net by Nienberg. Hit taken place by Weikert. Weikert. Nice dig. The Barrow has to play it across. Unverfirth. Good play by Unverfirth again. And then that hit was by Whitney Unverfirth. And Weekert again, and she's going to get a point out of it. Sylvia Weekert stayed with it, and we're tied at one. Yes, the net's your extra player out there a lot of times, and if that ball hits off the net, the top of the net, and just kind of rolls down the net, it's hard to play. Catherine Krause came in to play in the back row for Kaleida. She wears number one. Her counterpart, number one for St. Mary's, Willie Rammel, served that one. Back set, hit by Meyer. Hit by Clark, and she's going to get a point. 2-1 Rough Riders. You got to be impressed with Clark at the, at the she's net. Really she's really good, isn't she? Yep. Yeah, she's doing a great job of getting up there and, and hitting those. Bryn Clark. She's got a block that time. She was there along with Reagan Putoff. He free balled over. And quite, quite, couldn't quite get to the set that time. We're tied at two. Trying to stay out of the net. Set was a little close to the net. Couldn't quite get to it. Here's service by Olivia Meyer, the junior. And the libero, or the uh, setter, Audra Clark, went a long way to get that one, but just couldn't quite get to it to make a play on it. 3-2, Kaleida, as Meyer will serve again. Just Tied missed three. that one. Came off her hand funny, didn't it? Number yeah, 11, it hit right yeah. on the palm. Here's Sylvia Weaker to serve. Right to the libero, Unverfirth. And from the back row, Kraus. And the kill attempt, that point, point is put away by Sierra Graber. Diving attempt in the back row, but unable to keep it in play. And St. Mary's scores to make it 4-3. Good serve by Weaker. Here's the set. Krause has to play it over. Set. That ball's blocked. Oh, good block. Yeah, Malia wow. Lomez went up and got that one. Six foot two frame that she has. Good thought, but somebody in your way. Riley Eberg tied at four. Nuss has to play that one. Oh, really nice yeah. hit by Sierra Graber. That might be her best hit of the day. Yeah, nobody was going to get that one, that's for sure. That thing really came down hard. And Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. So St. Mary's on top of Kaleida 5 4 here in our second set. Clark serves. It would be Bryn Clark. That's so that ball's blocked with the net. There's Graber again. She's having a really nice second set. 6-4 for her team as Bryn Clark will serve again. She's doing some impressive work around that net up front. There's going to be an ace. Chuck that one up to Bryn Clark. Her first of today. When we look at Sierra Graber, she actually had 84 assists to lead her team coming into today's action. Senior hitter. Three-point lead. It's tipped over by, the, by Gerding. Gerding has to go get that one, and Krause will free balled over. But she missed the sidelines. Five of the last six points have gone the way of St. Mary's. Kaleido will take a timeout. 
St. Mary's eight. It's Kaleida, it's Kaleida four. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Our scoreboard today is presented by Lee's Service Recipe Chicken and Lime on Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Service Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Jacob O'Neill reminded me that the cat is always in the background of our picture here at the WOSN's viewpoint of Kaleida. Always looking at us. Always look. I like that. <laughs> hey, there's an ace. Chuck that one up to Bryn Clark, second in this particular rotation for her. Now she hits her serves just as hard as she hits it at the net. She had 16 aces through Thursday night's matches. Couple today and add another one. Three aces on this service rotation. We were tied at four when St. Mary's broke serve of Kaleida and they've gone on five consecutive points then by Bryn Clark. Float serve this time. Set Romez, and that's blocked to the net, but Romez still gets a point out of it, makes it 10 5. And Clyde really needed that one to stop the, the momentum that uh, St. Mary's is building up here. Here's Whitney Underfirth to serve. Audra Clark had to run a long way to get that one. Nice play, though, by Madison Steger to keep it inside the antenna. And Romez just slams yeah. it off of, <laughs> off of uh, Jenna Fortman in the back row. You could see that one coming yeah. a long way off because she just kind of rotated around there and then they had a wide open slam. Got that one from the right corner that time. And that ball was hit to the libero. Good play. Huber hit that one. Tipped over by Graber and... Just the sideline. So here comes Kaleida with three consecutive points. Chopped the lead in half. It's kind of like the first set we had, isn't it? It's a uh, momentum game. Fortman played that. Here's Nuss to set and hit by Steger. Another good, good play. Yeah. Libero, Matty Underfer is having a nice match. Tip. Romez gets it blocked with the net, but gets to it and make a play, but still going to be a point for St. Mary's. 11-7. Ellie Kraft will enter now to serve. Also in the set will be Lily Rammels. She wears number one. There's going to be an ace. Yeah. Ellie Kraft drops in her second ace of today's match. That serve dropped in a hurry. Team leads by five. So did that one. Almost a sinker yeah. ball. Graber hits. Play by that libero. Matty Uttenfirth again. And then free balled over by Huber. Tip. Rambles tried to catch him by surprise and couldn't. Another free ball. Let's see what to do with this one. Here's Rambles set again. Graber tips this one over. This set will go to Huber. And Adlin Huber says thank you for the nice set and puts that one away. A perfect set. Just up there high enough for her to be able yep. to come right down with the full force. Malia Romez will transition to the back row where she will serve. You watch these matches and you forget about all of the preparation that goes into this. All the practice time. Nuss has to free ball it over. Here's the hit. Meyer, and that shot's going to score a point for Olivia Meyer. 12-9. Rough Riders. Olivia will serve again. And long. This will bring Weekert into the game. Silvio plays in the front row, and when she does so, Jenna Fortman sits down. Jenna's been playing in the back row for her in that rotation. Oh, good dig out oh, of there. Really, yeah. That's what you have that setter on the floor for. And 
Girding. Block. Free ball. Nuss will set. Tip to an open area. She did it again. That was under first. And that was overpassed, and Olivia Meyer was there to make the play on it. A couple of big rally points that time for the Kaleida Wildcats. Good ball hitting by both teams. Mm -hmm. As Nieberg enters, play in the front row. Here's Girding to serve. Setter. Good hit that time. Nice put away by Sylvia Weekert. As it's 14-10. Kind of stabilized at that yeah, three, four bit. point lead here a little bit. Every time Clyde Chaney makes a little bit of a run, St. Mary's responds and puts a couple points back up there. Ashley Nuss. That's going to be, oh, it was touched. I thought it might be four contact. It was not, it was touched. Here's Nuss has to free ball it over. And overpass, and with that, standing at the net is yes. Sylvia Weaker to put it away. Thank you very much, I'll take that. 15-10 now in favor of St. Mary's, down the set, trying to even this one up. Again, St. Mary's again, throws that, uh, stops the rally for uh, Clyda every time. 15-11 on the serve that went long. Clark's in the front row again. Time for shot does not get over the net. It's 15-12. Set a little bit farther back towards the 10-foot line than has been typical so far as Huber serves again. Nuss goes and gets it from her libero position and just a free ball over. See what they do with it. Here's a pass. And hitting it long was Whitney Unverfirth. Rough Riders stay up six at 16-12. Good job by the official to see that nobody touched that as you know, when it went over. <laughs> this is why I think we need to ban ponytails from volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> And Heller Brockard, down official, couldn't see the number on the back of Reagan put off. And, <laughs> and she had to wait a moment to get the hair to flip sideways and get her into the match. We get a little water on the floor, a little perspiration on the floor. And Ashley Nuss doing what senior captains do. She's going to go out and clean it up for us. So. Well, the other thing with it, too, is you're up there hitting the ball and swinging that ponytail around. Yeah, yeah that's dangerous business out there. Well, the <laughs> thing some people forget is ponytails are allowed to touch the net. We get everyone's thinking somebody say, hey, her hair's in the net. Well, <laughs> hair doesn't count. Body no, parts do, but hair doesn't count. It's a four-point lead for St. Mary's as they serve. Good ace. Chuck oh, that yeah. one up to Lily Rammel, her first of today. Very quickly, I have six, I have eight, nine aces in the two sets for the Rough Riders with a five-point lead. The highly unofficial ace stat of the day. Another good oh, serve. Man. And yet another ace. And more back-to-back. Lily does. And we're going to get a timeout by Kaleida. They trail by six. Timeout WSN. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. TV44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now's a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTOW.com and click Donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Mark Scheindar, never go here. St. Mary's up by six, hence the second timeout of set number two by Mary Kortokratz from the Colada Wildcats. We still get some perspiration on the floor. And continuing service will be Lily Rammels, who just knocked in a couple of aces. Yeah, she's had a couple of great serves. Just, and there's another one right there. Yes, it was. And they find Nieberg in the front row. Good hit by Weekert. And they got the free ball over by Girding. Set Rammels. Clark hits, and Clark gets a point. I've really been impressed with Clark all, uh, all day today because she's just getting real close to that net and just hammering it down from that point. 
service into the net. It's still a six-point lead. And this time, Olivia Meyer will serve. She has an ace today, one of the two that Kaleida has had. And what are we going to get? Yep, I thought one of the Kaleida Wildcats yep. reached over the net. And that was the case. They contacted the ball, and there were still hits available for St. Mary's. And so St. Mary's with a seven-point lead. Good serve that time. Has to be played by the libero. And that will be a kill. We'll give that one to Whitney Underford. St. Mary's on the edge right here. 2014. Jenna Fortman comes in to play in the back row as she did earlier in this particular set. And Riley Nieberg will serve. The team trails by six. They need a run right here. Good pass. And Clark hits. Girding sets. Oh, there it goes. And there it goes. How about that? Malia yep. Romez says, I see an open spot on the floor and just put it there. Nice touch by the yep. by that young lady. Really good vision. And then obviously the ability to put it right where she wanted it. 21-15 Rough Riders. And Brent Clark will serve. She has three aces today. And she hits it deep to the back court and makes them make a decision whether they want to try to get it or not. And she's going to get another one. 22-15. Ryan Nieberg will enter again. To me, Mark, that's the toughest thing is when you hit it that deep into the back court, the way they have, you have to make a decision. Do I hit it or do I go for it or not go for it? Set. Romez hits, and oh, oh, she missed the back line. Oh, what do we got? Got a touch. That's why she missed the back line. 22-16. Sometimes you can tell when the ball changes direction indicator. Sometimes that uh, touch is so subtle you don't. Yeah. Here's Whitney Underworth to serve. Her team trails by six. St. Mary's on the verge of closing out set number two and sending it to three. Set. Kill. Nope. nope. Missed. Maddie Steger missed the back line. A six-point run and a four-point run have made a difference in this set for St. Mary's. It's lead by five. Tip to the open area, and that'll get a point for Steger. I think we just saw that a little while ago, only it was on the Clyde side. Six-point lead. Here comes Ellie Kraft in the serve. She's got a couple of aces today. She had 10 coming in today, just had two more today. Float serve this time. Girding will set. And Romez puts it away. 23-18. Romez will serve, but Leah. And Clyde says, we're not going to go away quietly. I hate to tell you that. Oh, nice play by wow. Ramble just to keep it alive. Heads up play by the setter. And that's going to be a point we'll go on to Graber off the good set. And we're at set point here in set number two. Weaker enters, play in the front row. Graber will go back to serve yep. on this one. Sierra Graber. Everything will set. And it's going to roll across the net and end up being a point. It. Yep, that ball will roll <laughs> across the net, and Maddie, Maddie Steger will get a point out of it, and her team will take set two. That will be a 25-17 set, and we will go to set three after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN.
We're back at Kaleida, the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament for set three. Opening set went by the way of the Kaleida Wildcats, 25-22. St. Mary's came back to win set two, 25-17. Dar, a little bit uh, reminiscent of what uh, St. Mary's did in their quarterfinal match. They were down 25-14 to Fairview in the opening set, won set two, 25-17. Came back and won the, the third set, 26-24. Here we are in set three of this one. And they made a lot of nice adjustments, too, in this, you know, so far, you know, they were a little vulnerable in the middle there for a while, and Clyde was taking advantage of it, and they've rotated around and cleaned that up a little bit, and they're getting great play from uh, Clark out there, both as a server and up on the net. And, and she right got a point for him right there. Yes, she did. For those of you who are a bit unfamiliar with high school volleyball, you say, well, this is the deciding set. So we played a 15, not so in three set matches, such as the Invitational. This one will go to 25, win by two. The only time you play that deciding set to 15 is if it's a five set match. Opening point goes the way of St. Mary's. We're now tied at one. The winner will play the winner of our second semifinal match today, which will be coming up next on WOSN. That would be Wayne Trace. They were a three-set victor over North Central and Liberty Benton, who defeated Delphi St. John's in a couple of good sets. Clark. Girding sets again. That's blocked by Clark. And Romans <laughs> keeps it there alive. Go. Good scramble by them. Oh, that's an illegally hit ball they got away with. Good series so yeah, far, though. A long point here. This is going to be Nienberg. Here's the set by Clark. And point. Well, I'd have thought, and I did too, that the ball was illegally contacted, but our officials did not agree with our assessment, and they're the ones that really count. So it's 2-1 St. Mary's. Good serve that time by Weekert. That ball's hit across by Catherine Kraus. And what do we got? Oh, Get illegal, yeah. The illegal back row at a, a block that time. We're tied at two. The setter, Audra Clark, not able to contact the ball legally above the height of the net. She's a back row player. That was the call right there. And that serve misses. So back and forth we go early on. This looks like another set that's going to go the same way as the other one if they keep this up. Yeah, here's Bryn Clark. Four aces for her today. She serves again. Just got a knuckle sets. ball. And Romez, thank you very much. We're tied at three. Neither team has scored off of service yet here in set three. Huber comes into play in the front row. And back to serve will be Whitney Underfirth. Underfirth will... Have 11 aces before today's action. Gerding pushes it over, but St. Mary's is ready for it. That ball is hit over by Putoff. Tried to run a slide that time yes. to Romez, and they got away with it because of miscommunication. Yeah, she did, really wasn't in position when she hit that. Kind of came around there, but it counts as a point. Doesn't matter. Ball's blocked, but played by Romez at the net. Hit over then by Nienberg. And Graber hit that one. And Romez yeah, gets a point off a blocker. 5-3. Both teams scrambling to keep the ball alive, but that time it went off a blocker and ends up being a point for the Colorado Wildcats. Yeah, I think in this, this set you're going to see a lot more of that from Romez. Trying to go down the line and hit that thing. Set. That kill will go by Maddie Steger. And in to serve is Ellie Kraft. A couple races for her today. Romez rolls it over. They get to it. And then Romez gets a block. Well, Romez is all over the place right now. Good play by the libero Batty Unverfirth. Is 
She's like a one yeah, person. Yeah, she Robes was <laughs> everywhere on that point, wasn't she? She sure was. That Six four, her team is up, and she gets back and serve with a smile on her face. I think she got four arms, doesn't she? <laughs> she Looked was, like it on that one. She there. was all over the place that time. Here's Malia Romez. I was getting tired watching her. <laughs> Served to Nuss. Back set. That ball's blocked at the net by Adeline Huber for a point. Collide up three. On our Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. Romez serves again. Girding will set. That's blocked. Good, good play. Good yeah, good Romez good. got to that one. Here comes Nieberg. She hits it to Nuss. And Graber hits it through the blocker, and she gets a point. Now, this is where she shined all day long is back here when she's serving. Here Graber, 84 kills, five aces, five assists, and 73 digs coming into the weekend action. Pass will go to Olivia Meyer, and Olivia scores. It's 8-5. Maria Gerding, 16 kills, 8 aces, 182 assists, and 54 digs this year for the senior setter. Good serve that time. Puts them on their heels, diving forward. And somebody was in the net wearing a blue jersey. Call goes against Sylvia Weekert. Clyde and Boyle on a little bit of a roll right here. 9-5. Yeah, they won uh, five, four of the last five points. Back set. That's blocked. Oh, good recovery. Yeah, and oh wow. Yeah, Ryan Nieberg looked like she wanted to go up and try to put it away. She realized the angle wasn't the best, and she let it go to the back row, and it fell. Nine six. Ashley Nuss to serve. A libero with 129 digs and kill. Chuck it up to Riley Nieberg. Just in the right spot, too, right in that corner back there. St. Mary's is 3-0 in the Western Buckeye League. They have wins over Salina, Defiance, and Wapak. Losing just a single set. That was to Wapak on Thursday. And Kaleida yet to play a Putnam County League team a game. Here's Brent Clark, as we've seen multiple times today at the net. Makes it 10-7. Here's Lily Ramble to serve. Gets the instructions from Coach Cal Yoder where she wants the ball hit. Nieberg tips. Got it over Brent Clark's outreached hands. 11-7. Yeah, that's the way to play uh, Clark when she's in that front line. It's just not put it up there where she can just hammer it down. Olivia Meyer. And then the kill will go to Reagan Putoff. 11-8. My highly unofficial score sheet says St. Mary's has not scored off of serve yet in this particular set three. After having a lot of aces in set two. And not going to score this time yet. Not going to score off a serve this time either. But we've seen it in the first two sets. Even though, you know, St. Mary's gets down, they see, still manage to come back, back into it and keep it close. Ronnie Nieberg. It's the ball to the back row. Clark. On your first, Whitney hits. Good diving play in the back row that time by Jenna Fortman. Romez thought she had an open spot and did not because Sierra Graber was high enough to knock it back down. 12-9. This will be the ninth time that uh, St. Mary's has served in the third set and have yet to score a point off of service. Good serve that time, however. Three balled over. Clark sets. 
Oh, and that's good blocked. Block. That's blocked, but it's blocked out of bounds, and they do score a point off of service this time. It's a 12-10. They've scored a lot of points from Clark's been back here serving today. Correct. She has four aces, but also has put the uh, Clyde Wildcats on her heels a few times. Good serve right there. She just barely clears the net with her serves. Portman runs the wrong way to get it. Clark hits from behind the 10-foot line, and that's a really nice set and hit by Bryn Clark. Got a really nice set that time from Audra Clark. He had 96 assists through Thursday evening. And it's 12-11. Float serve this time. Nieberg has to play it. And a tough angle, it gets a point yeah, it out. Was. It was. I was just about to say, here comes St. Mary's back again, but Clyder recovers and gets the point. From a difficult angle, trying to keep the ball between the antennas, which she did. And Whitney Underfirth will serve with her team up two. That kill by Maddie Steger. Rammel and uh, Audra Clark trains, change positions. The two setters. So whenever in the back row, they always set. Good block, yeah. Romez went up to hit it, but the blocker knocked it out of bounds. It's 14-12. Graber's done a nice job at the net all day long, and she showed it again there. Here's Malia Romez to serve. It's going to be free balled over. Let's see what they do with it. Huber hits it in the blocker. The blocker goes straight down, but on the St. Mary's side, and St. Mary's going to take a timeout. Their first one here in set three. They trail by three. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Scoreboard today here at the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament is presented by Lee's Famous Rescue Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Rescue Chicken home style happens here. Three-point lead in favor of the Clyde of Wildcats. Gomez serves again, and that's going to be a diving oh, play. And break the string. It's a nice diving uh, dig on that one, but I don't think she expected it to drop in there for a point. Well, I think what happened is everybody expected it to be an ace, yeah. and she made the play, <laughs> and the Wildcats kind of just froze as Sierra Graber will serve. sets, and the kill attempt oh. will sail along by Huber, and it's 15-14. Back come the Rough Riders again. Here they come. Graber serves again. Neither team has had more than a three-point run in this match. Hit off a blocker that time by Meyer, and then could be four hits. It is. 16-14, Wildcats. Maria Girding. This is where your conditioning comes into play because you've got to get another match after this, one of these two teams says. Lieber went up and got the block. And then we get a Wildcat in the net. I think the call went against Ellie Kraft, I think. It was number... 10, I believe. 17 14, three point lead again as Girding serves. Good play by Girding. Long. And the ball goes long, yep. So the weaker tried to get it in, could not. 18 14. Kaleida has led by as many as four, 11 7. And that's going to be an ace. 19-14. Chalk that one up to Maria Girding, her second. And timeout. That one will be a timeout charge to the St. Mary's Rough Riders as they have find themselves down five. 
You can check out the WSN website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. Got a few people that have come in here to watch this, the volleyball yeah. invitational, considering what's going on downtown. Well, and part of the issue is you're playing in two separate gymnasiums mm -hmm. here, so you kind of bounce back and forth depending on where your team is at and what you would like to see. What you see right now is the Kaleida Wildcats are up five. And they have scored in the last uh, four consecutive points. And they've scored six out of the last eight to get to this particular point. St. Mary's has burned both of their timeouts. Let's see if they've got a rally left in them today. I'll see what kind of adjustments they made on with that timeout. Maria Girding. They're going to set Weaker this time. And Weaker hits it to the libero and gets a point out of it. Well, good things for St. Mary's coming out of the timeout. St. Mary's will be at Minster on a Tuesday evening, then a huge Western Buckeye League match. They have Ottawa Glandorf at home on Thursday night. It'll be a huge match in that conference. Yes, it will be. Tipped to an open area, but Nuss makes a dive for it. And then what do we got? Ball's out of bounds. And we'll go to Kaleida. Ramble a little slow getting up after that one, too. Continental has a couple of away matches this week. Continental, excuse me. Kaleida has a couple of away matches this week. One at Kaleida on Tuesday as St. Mary's comes back with a point. 2016. And then they will go to Ayersville on Thursday, will the Kaleida Wildcats. Catherine Krause enters, and Billy Rambles will serve. Nuss has to play it. Here's the set by Ramble. And then it's going to be free balled over. Girding with the set. Oh. Set it just a bit behind <laughs> Meyer. Meyer still got to it. Clark hits. Meyer hits it again, and she hit it long. Kalida wants a touch, and they got it. Yeah, they got it. 21 16. Meyer, who played a couple of balls in that last point. Serves. She's got an ace today. Collided like nothing better than put this away now and not uh, continue on. They are four points short of getting to the finals today. Brian Clark gets that one. Good push by Whitney on the first. And the setter has to play it over Audra Clark, and Audra's going to get a point for her effort. 21-17. And one four-point run today in this set three. That was by Kaleida. And that's kind of the difference right now. Here's Ram Romez in the front row. Nuss sets. That's blocked. Nuss has to play it again. Clark sets. And she's got it. Yes, sir. Teammate Clark puts it in. For a point, it's 21-18. Well, you got to be impressed with the resiliency of uh, St. Mary's in the, all day. I mean, they, you know, in this match particularly, they've been hammered down like a few times, but they keep coming back and keeping close. Sylvia Weaker will serve. Romez hits it into a blocker, and it comes right back at her. Two blockers there. Reagan put off might have gotten it. Bryn Clark was there as well. Either way, it becomes a St. Mary's point. Another they trail timeout. by just two. We get a timeout. Timeout WSN. You're watching high school volleyball on WSN. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast. Say thanks to viewer supported TV44 by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donation of viewers to enable airing in this game and other locally produced programs. Donate now at, now at WTOW.com and click Donate. St. Mary's has got it back to two. They trailed by five not long ago. Kaleida takes their first time out. 
And back in the corner, the Liberty Benton Eagles are warming up. They're gonna play our next match against the Wayne Trace Raiders. That will be airing right after this one, but we've got business to finish in this match first. Ramble serves and she gets an ace. Uh -huh. Lily Ramble's third ace of today's match. And I don't know how many times we talked yeah. about that, about momentum being being a big thing in volleyball. Boy, I'll tell uh, you what. My you, mistake, uh, Dar, I got to correct myself quickly. Sorry to interrupt. That was uh, not number one. That was number 11. The ace went to weaker. Uh, apologies for interrupting there. That's all right. Correct my mistake. And finding the open area with a nice push and a score. 22-20. Lady Cats, you cannot allow St. Mary's to hang around like this. You got to put them away with, you know. Well, Dar, I talked about uh, the Liberty Benton Eagles warming up in the corner. They are in the area of play, and the officials are trying to move them back. Yep. Here, you don't want to warm up that quickly, and that's close. Got to stay out of, the, out of the way of the floor here. Here's not Nienberg to serve. Her team's up by two. Clark, Brent hits to an open area. Uh, 22-21. Who, who's going back to serve right now? Clark, yeah. Which has always been dangerous for Clyda because she's really been the one that's a catalyst back here when she serves, too. Here's Clark to serve again. Malia Romez, and she missed the back line. It was tied at 22. Good effort, just missed. And she had determination on her face there. Jim Clark. Set Romez again. And that time she hits it to the Riders. And Graber gets a kill. And St. Mary's has come all the way back to take a lead. This will be a timeout that will go to Kaleida, their final timeout. They trail now 23-22 as seven of the last uh, nine points, seven of the last eight points have gone the way of St. Mary's. Dar, here they come again. Here they come, and, and every time, it's, you know, like I said, their catalyst back here is Bryn Clark, and you know, whether she's up in the front line or whether she's back there serving, it seems like they score points no matter what. And her serve's really not that hard. It's just low and right over the net and makes uh, you know Clyde have to play the ball. As they did in their quarterfinal match, they lost the opening set to Fairview, came back and defeated them then 25-17 and went 26-24 in set number three. And they've been down throughout this particular set, and they've come back to take a one-point lead, and we have, they have used both their timeouts. Here comes Catherine Krause in as a sub to play in the back row. Our first semifinal match today of the Pioneer Invitational. Girding sets. Tip. Romez was banged up in the air that time by put off. That's it over. Here's Romez again. This time she winds up and play it again. Oh, good block. It was. Tip to an open area. Romez got that one. This is Clark from behind the 10-foot line. Here's Romez again. Didn't get a very high set. Uh -huh. She has to push it over. This time they set under Firth. Oh, what a great <laughs> series. That's a great point, isn't it? That's blocked. Saved. Oh, nice job. Blocked again. Diving play. Watch the play. It's great. Bryn Clark hits it to the libero that time. Matty Unverfirth. That was played by Nieberg. Here we go again. Free ball. Let's see what they do with it. Back set. Romez blocks oh. it. Hits it off a blocker and gets a point. Tied up at 23, and I'll tell you what, no matter who got that, was going to get that oh. point. That was great volleyball right there. Tremendous point. Here comes Huber back into play in the front row. And now it's who can score two consecutive points. Kaleida, 24-23. Whitney on the first, trying to serve out the set, send them to the finals. Yeah. 
It's going to be free balled over. Here's Gerding set. Romez on the slide, and they got a That's point. It. The Kaleida Wildcats trailed, trailed 23-22, came back to score the final three points of set number three, and they will take this set 25-23. They will move into the finals. Yeah, after we take our <laughs> catch our breath, Dar, and watch Liberty Benton and Wayne Trace play. Absolutely, and who to get that last point with the big Romance girl? Yes, she did after off a good set. They will take a three-set victory over St. Mary's, who will drop into the semifinal match. Well, Dar and I are going to catch our breath. We're back with Wayne Trace and Liberty Benton. Right after this, you're watching High School Volleyball at WOSN. Welcome back to Kaleida High School. It's the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament here on WOSN, our second semifinal match today. We'll pitch the Liberty Benton Eagles and the Wayne Trace Raiders. My name is Mark Shine. My pleasure to do play by play alongside Dar Nevergal. Dar, kind of a mismatch on paper. Liberty Benton comes in seven and one. Uh, the Raiders come in at three and three, but that's why we play them. That's right. Well, we thought it was a little bit of a mismatch between Delphi St. John's and Liberty Benton earlier on, too. And Delphi St. John's said, no, I don't think so. Liberty Benton eventually won those contests, but they had to put up a fight, too. That is true. Liberty Benton won over Delphi St. John's 25-22 and 25-16 in their opening match today. Wayne Trace defeated North Central. They lost the opening set 25-23, but came back to win the next two sets, 25-10 and 25-15. The winner of this will get Kaleida Wildcats coming up right after this one as we play this second semifinal match here at Kaleida today. The Liberty Benton Eagles, of course, have had uh, some tremendous success out of the Blanchard Valley Conference. Yeah, they've had success for years. Yes, they have. To volleyball and girls basketball as well. But you know, they've got some big girls out there, particularly the Gherkin girl who's, you know, a star in any place he plays. Casey Hornish will serve for the Wayne Trace Raiders. They're in red today on the right side of your screen. And on the left side of your screen will be the Liberty Benton Eagles. They are in the black jerseys. They're libero. Caitlin Erljack wears white, the libero for Wayne Trace. And that would be number, I'm trying to catch a number here for her. She's in the blue jersey, number 13, and that is uh, Carolyn Winans. The opening play, Liberty Benton mishandled the ball, and now we're tied at one. And that will send back to serve Hanny Wells. Hey, we've got a couple of big girls out there for Liberty Benton. Lindsey May, too, is a five foot ten junior out there. Controlling that middle. Bumped over by Lexi Moore, and then tipped over by Sophia Barbara. Point goes to Liberty Benton, 2-1. Alyssa Henny wells as the setter. They played 26 sets this year, 193 assists for her. And ends up being a point as Wayne Trace tips it over. That point went to Amber Stoller. Yeah, Wayne Trace at 3-3 three three record, and you know, 1-0 in the Green Meadows Conference. Serve was by Harper Myers. Here's well set. Stacey Cornish sets that one. It's blocked. And a good block at the net by Sophia Barbara. And what we talked about on paper, and you look down the line on this thing, you got two six footers out there for Liberty Benton on the front line and a five foot ten girl. You know, you look yep. over on Wayne Trace. And they don't have their heights listed, but you know they don't look like they have that. You know, one number 18 out there is a pretty good size girl, but outside of that, they don't look like they got the height. Yeah, that would be Lexi Moore you're talking about, the tallest player. It's 4-2 now, Liberty Benton. Serving as Maddie Amstutz, sophomore. And she's going to get an ace, the first one here in our semifinal match. She does serve from that left side. A lot of times they serve straight up from the middle, but she's going to take it from that side over there. She has 11 aces 
through Wednesday night's match. Their final match of the before this one was against Van Lu. And that's going to be another one. You can see why she has so many aces, too, because boy, she hits it hard, she hits it low, it dives down and forces you to decide whether you want to really go for the ball or not go for the ball. The only eagle lost this year was to Sylvania Northview, a power a few miles north of Finley. They've had some really good matches over the years there. It's played by Barber, or by Wells. Bumped up by Winans and going to be free balled over by Caroline Winans. Here's Hanny Wells set. And oh, a tip job. to the open area. Yeah, good play by Riley Nestrick. Good and senior play right there. And if Liberty Benton started a little slow when they came in today and played Delphi yep, St. John's, woke not in this one. They've started on fire here as they won seven of the first nine points. Hit out of the middle that time by Moore. And the net kill will be chalked up by Gherkin. Lauren makes it 8-2 at six consecutive points. Another good serve. And that one goes across the net on the overpass. Here's the set. This hit will be by Kareem Win Win Winans. And... A four hit play, it's nine two. And we are gonna get a timeout. That will be called by Wayne Trace. It's nine two Eagles. You're watching High School Volleyball at WOSN. Our scoreboard today is presented by Lee's Famous Rescue Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. And very early on our scoreboard, Liberty Denton with a 9-2 lead. Hence the timeout by Cassidy Posey, and the serve goes long. It's 9-3. Yeah, Wayne Trace with that timeout because they're getting a little coaching by you know, their, their head coach to try to figure out how to counteract that front line for Liberty Benton. Here's Carolyn Winans. And you have to free ball over by Hanny Wells. Set. Hit out of the middle. Lexi Moore, and she's going to get a point for her efforts. Good set pass, good set. It's 9-4. They're going to use Lexi Moore. She's got 40 kills in their uh, opening six uh, matches. That would lead the uh, Raiders this year. Tori Sin has 35. Harper Myers has 34. They have played just 14 sets before today, so if their numbers seem a little low, that would be the reason why. And we're going to get service again by Carolyn Winans. Played by the libero Erdeljack, and then a kill attempt by Gherkin. Good save. And then hit outside the antenna. Tori Sin couldn't keep it in play. Makes it 10-4. And you watch Kirkland go up there and hit that ball. I mean, it, it actually puts them back on their heels when they have to receive it. Here's Ellie Norman. She will serve for the Eagles. This hit will be by Tori Sin. Point to Liberty Benton. It's 11 4. And Norma will serve again. She has three aces on the season. Hits the ball to the Libero Winans. And that hit goes long by Kareem Winans. It's 12 4. And it looks like the, the strategy for Wayne Trace is we got to you know, spike it long to get it past the blockers up front for Liberty Benton, but they're hitting it just a little bit too hard. Good set out of the middle and a kill. Waiting to see if, yes it is. I was waiting to see if somebody yeah. hit it out. Lexi Moore is the one who got the kill that time. Looked at both line judges to see if they had something different in their score. They did not. Paige Alber will now come in and serve. She has 18 aces this year. Wow. And again, this is just a 
seventh match that we have stats for. And she's going to get one right there. Plays the top of the net and gets it across. Let's see if that's a pattern she has. Paige Albert, first uh, ace for the Raiders today. She's a senior for this Wayne Trace team. 80 assists, too. She's a setter. She's in the back row and serves and sets. Henny Wells sets. But the set was a little bit low and couldn't get a play on it. Covered a lot of volleyball over the last several years for Liberty Benton. I think Hanny Wells has been playing for like eight or nine years. Oh, yeah, at least, at least. And playing very well. That cuts today. She got that one to dive in on the back line. Hmm. The last four points have gone the way of the Raiders, and they've cut the lead to just four. And ever since she's come in and started serving, they start picking up points. It's a good serve. Andy Wells has to go a long way to get to that one. Then it will be played over by DeHart. Erdeljack will set. Gherkin hits, and Lauren will get a kill. 13-8 Eagles. You know, the Eagles needed that one to get her off of, you know, Paige Albert out of there from serving anymore. Josie Todd enters. She wears number two. She will serve, and then she will become the setter. Hanny Wells in the front row will become a hitter. Set. And in or out. That's in. That kill will go to Tori Sin. It's 13-9. Harper Myers enters to play in the front row. And to serve will be Karen Wake, Karen Winans. I serve. It was. It was Gherkin. That's block. Andy Wells is now a hitter. And that's a good hit. Chuck that one up to Tory Sin. Good series by Wayne Trace on that one. Yes, it was. And here they come back. Scored six out of the last seven points. Like timeout played dip, paid big dividends for them. And that's going to be an ace. Winans gets her first of today. She had uh, just a single ace through their opening six matches this year. Picked one up right there. Good serve again. Here's Todd to set. Oh, and a big hit oh, that time. Yeah. Corey DeHart put that one away. 14-10. And Lindsay May will come into play in the front row. She's on a rotation with uh, Maddie Amstutz. Amstutz plays the back row. Good serve. Set. Harper Myers hits. And they volleyballed around trying to make a play. Lindsey May's shot was too good for them to do so, so she gets a point. Her team's up 15-11. Yeah, it's tough to play against somebody that, you know, can get up that high and strike it down as hard as she can. Here's Lauren Gherkin. Todd sets. To hard hit that one. And Earl Jack has to make a diving play on the hit by Harper Myers and is unable to keep the ball in play. It's 15 12. Lori Sin will enter and serve. But the Raiders definitely came to play this year, this, today. And what a chalk and ace up for her. Lori gets an ace. 15-13. After having an eight-point lead, Liberty Benton has seen that lead shrink to just two. Oh. And then Lindsay May says, I'm going to score a point. And she does off a good set. Makes it 16-13. 
Those girls not only just, you know, spike it down, they, they wind up before they hit it. <laughs> Here's Caitlin Earl Jack to serve. As the libero, she has 128 digs in their 26 sets. They played through Wednesday evening. The little Jack has to play that one in the back row. Good play by May. Good play that time by Todd. Oh, good dig, yeah. This good point, they yep. ended up with the net to get the block is Sophia Barbara. Four point lead for the Eagles as Earl Jack will serve again. And that point will go to Liberty Benton as it falls on the floor on the block. 18-13. Yeah, so we have Barbara had 31 blocks coming into this today. Veteran six foot senior. And we got an Eagle, or excuse me, a Raider out of alignment. Somebody overlapped somebody. We're getting an explanation. Our officials today are Jack Link, who made that call, and Ann Elbrock is on the stand. Makes it 19-13. Float serve. Good volley back over. And he well sets, and there's a kill. There it is. Yep, chalk that one up to Barbara. 2013. Liberty Benton had a seven point run back early in the match. That's five consecutive points here to take this seven point lead. Earl Jack has served four of those points. And float serve there. And she gets a point out of her efforts, 21-13. They get a timeout yep. now. Wayne Trace will take a timeout as they trail by eight. They trailed nine to two when they took their last timeout. That helped them rally back into it. And now they trail by eight doing it again. You can check out our website. That would be WSN.TV for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone else in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. I got to look and see where I go next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure where I go. Oh, it's been a busy week and uh, yeah. a lot of stuff going on. I know I've got a volleyball, I think, Tuesday night. And I think we've got uh, football on Friday night somewhere. I'm sure I got football somewhere I got on football Friday, Friday night. I'm just got to not figure sure out, yeah, figure out where I'm headed is all. Eight-point lead now chalked up to the uh, Eagles as Ertl Jack will serve again. See if the timeout helps Wayne Trace as it did the last time. Henny Wells will set. Good hit that time by DeHart. And then coming back this way is Amber Stoller. And that will be a point to break the run. Make it 21-14. 22-14. Oh, they gave it no, they gave it. I meant my mistake. I missed the, the score, call there. 22-13 still. And trying to tip the ball in an open area is Harper Meyer. She could not. It's 23-13. So you're betting within two of making this first set. And they have scored eight consecutive points. Here's Ertl Jack. And that would hit the antenna, and they will be at set point here in the opening set. It's 24-13. See if they end up on a 10-point run to end the set. I'm getting a lot of points since Earl Jack's been mm. serving the ball. She served eight consecutive. If they score this time, it'll be nine consecutive to end the set. Slide Goodbye. kill, yep. Big put away, Sophia Barbara, and... The Liberty Bend Eagles come back with a huge big play at the end of the set to win the opening set, 25-13. Set two coming up after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at Kaleida High School. It's the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament. The opening set here in our second semifinal match goes to the Liberty Bend Eagles. They did so with... 
a 25-13 victory over the Wayne Trace Raiders. Mark Scheindar never golfed. Oh, that was a pretty impressive performance by Liberty Benton. It certainly was. And, and Wayne Trace made a nice little run there in the middle, but they, you know they just couldn't overcome the fact that they're, they're slightly out manned in, you know, as far as height-wise goes. So they, you know, they scored a lot of points off their serve, which helped them a lot. But you know, it's tough to try to get it over six footers and five foot ten people in the front there. Alyssa Hanning Wells will serve the opening serve of set number two, and she gets an ace for her efforts. And Liberty Benton continues right where they left off. They finished on a 10-0 run to end set number one, going from a 15-13 lead to a 25-13 win. See what Wayne Trace has got in the tank, and that one goes long. It's 2-0 Liberty Benton Eagles. The winner will get Kaleida, a three-set victory over St. Mary's in the semis today. Well, Wayne Trace's, you know, plan of attack is to try to hit it as deep and get it over the top of the uh, blockers and defenders up front for Liberty Benton. And Wells with another ace, two out of her three aces, or serves have been aces here to open up set number two. Well, we saw this in the first set, too. Mm. Wayne Trace made a nice little comeback. That they did. Good recovery there. Yeah. But still, the point's going to go the way of the Eagles. Here's Hanny Wells to serve again. Good serve by Alyssa. And it has to be free balled over by Natalie Stoller. Set out of the middle, and is it good? It is on the kill by Sophia Barbara. 5-0 Eagles. Wayne Trace has three big matches this week, all on the road. They go to Bluffton on Monday. They go to Hicksville on Tuesday and Ottoville on Thursday. So big week coming up for the Raiders. And he well sets. Nice. <laughs> that was Vanessa Taylor who had the initial hit. But the Raiders were able to put it back into play, and they break the string and make it to 5-1. Yeah, Liberty Benton's got uh, a trip to Arlington coming up. Yep. Uh, Elmwood, and then Arcadia. Barbara tips to an open area. Really nice diving play. Good effort in the back row by Casey Hornish, but the Liberty Benton still was able to score a point out of it. Makes it 6-1. Because Matty Amstutz in to serve. Good serve by Amstutz. That ball was hit by Harper Myers. Another good hit that time by Vanessa Taylor. They've seen great effort from Wayne Trace. And Durkin gets the kill at 7-1. This is one of the really nice facilities we do volleyball and basketball out of Dara. I always like coming over here. Adam Huber does a great job with his AD job here, and the facility is just wonderful. Oh, it's beautiful. And, nope, they're not able to keep it alive. It's 8-1. Once Another good used. serve. Timeout, Wayne Trace. Yeah, once you get used to the cat staring at you the whole time. <laughs> I love that cat. And I, <laughs> I just think that's one of the, the coolest things around. Now, Dar, you and I have a huge decision to make. There's going to be a little gap in our broadcast coverage while they play uh, the, uh, the this consolation match between this one and the finals. Concession stand food? Or, <laughs> or we can walk uptown to the Pioneer Days and go street fair food. That's true. Um, well, let's get see. We'll get Jacob to buy. Uh, yeah, there we go. He took his headset off. Yeah, he, he knew did. that was he, he knew that was coming, <laughs> didn't he? So we got a decision to make. It is Pioneer Days here in Kaleida, one of the premier events in Northwest Ohio. I might go to the car show on the way home. I saw some of them oh, coming yeah. in. I'd like to see some of that before I go home. Eight out of the first nine points of the match have gone the way of the Liberty Benton Eagles, and they are serving. Trying to keep it going, they got to get an ace. They do so by Maddie Amstutz, third of her efforts today. Makes it 9-1. She really likes serving off that left side she of does. the court. Yep, serves more in the left-hand corner. 
Good hard Ooh. serve that time. Wayne Trace gets it back. This is going to be played by Lexi Moore and outside the antenna when she tried to play it across. It is 10-1 Eagles. Liberty men are making light work of this one so far, but and they are playing on uh, very well. You can see the set of that time. Casey Harnish had to go a long way to get to that one. Melissa Hanny Wells sets this time, and yep. First of all, we're, we're going to get a kill by Vanessa Taylor, and she's disappointed because we had a Wayne Trace Raider in the net, and that took her kill away from yeah, her. Yeah, no kid. Comes number. 24 into the match for Wayne Trace. And I do not have a 24 on my score sheet, and I asked at the scores table if I had a correct score sheet, and they said yes. So we're going to have to work on that one. There's a block at the net by Taylor. No, not by Taylor, excuse me, that was by Barbara. This will be Barbara again. That kill attempt was by Harper Myers. This will be Lauren Gherkin. Good long series here. It is. Annie Wells jump sets again. Tip. Oh, there you go. And they get a point out of it. Tipped in the open area by Sophia Barber off a good jump set. 12-1. Wayne Trace put up a good battle in that particular point. They just weren't able to score. Yeah, they're putting in a lot of great effort mm -hmm. in this particular set. But it's dumped over by the setter, but they're able to play it. And good job keeping the ball alive that time by the libero, Carolyn Winans. Set. Gherkin out of the middle, but she <laughs> upset with herself. She got yeah, a good set and left it in the mid of the net. And she says, I'm going to put that ball away about 9 out of 10 times or maybe 10 out of 12 times. And she just left that one a bit short. Here comes uh, Caitlin Slade in to serve. That's uh, a little nice long run by Liberty Benton. Mm -hmm. Set. Oh. The set wasn't as where they would have liked it to go. The point will go to Wayne Trace. And another serve by Slade. That one will not be in play. It's 13 to three Eagles. This will allow Ellie Norman to enter. And Ellie will go back to serve. 5 4 junior. A little push serve over. Oh, that's a kill. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chuck that one up to Tori Sin. 13 4. They haven't, Wayne Trace hasn't had too many of those so far in this particular match, but that was a great one right there. Here's Caroline Williams. Winan, excuse me, the libero to serve. Annie Wells will set. That one's tipped over by Taylor. Vanessa getting a chance this set to show her stuff. Been set several times. She's not going to rotate out as Josie Todd will enter. And Josie will become the setter then. 5-4 junior is Josie. 60 assists when she's in a match as a setter. Pushed to the open area by Winans. And then winding up after that one was Hanny Wells. Again, good job by Wayne Trace to keep it alive. Todd sets, Gherkin hits. And into the crowd it goes. You can play that ball if you can keep one foot on the playing surface. So good effort that time by Casey Hornish, but just not enough real estate for her to make a play. A good wide receiver on the sideline, huh? That, that's the way it goes. Yeah, ball hit the net. Good play then by Slade. Gherkin has to just play it over. A little roll shot. Was hit by Tori Sin. And Gherkin punched it long. It's 15 5. Paige Albert will enter. They scored a lot of points when Alvarez was yep. serving in the first set. So She had a couple of aces, and they did score a lot of points. She will then be the setter if she's in the back row. 
And she gets another ace. No, they kept it alive. Oh, they pancaked wow. it and kept it alive. Good play. And then they missed the back line. Really good play by Liberty Benton. It looked like it was headed for yeah, the sure did. headed for wood, and instead we got a pancake play out of it and kept it alive. Warren Gherkin serves. I think she dug a hole out there to get that one out of there. <laughs> Here's Gherkin's jump serve. Albert sets. And Todd sets. This ball's blocked at the net. Good play that time. I think it was Tori Sin got it. She was there along with Winans. And it's 16-6, kind of stabilized at this 10-point lead here for the last several points. Emily Eink will enter for Liberty Benton. She wears number 16, plays in the front row. A junior. 17-6. Yeah, that's tough because Wayne Trace can't afford those kind of unforced errors. Well, we know what can, she can do when she's back there yeah. serving. <laughs> Caitlin Erdeljack enters as the libero and server. That's just a bit of an overpass, but it's good enough to get a point out of it. 17-7. Which is a big break for Wayne Trace, because I think Erdeljack had, what, 10 consecutive points when she was serving? Here's Riley Nestrick in play as for the Liberty Benton Eagles. And... Oh, just a momentary break. We've got to get a captain as Warren Gherkin is, was the captain on the floor, and you can't play without a captain on the floor. So when she rotated out, stoppage in play while well, we have one name. Lori Sin will serve. She had an ace today. Another one of those rules that most people don't know about. Set. Hit, and looks like we got a Raider in the net. Harper Meyer was called for being in the net that time. 18-7. Tori Sin enters, as does Hanny Wells. And Alyssa Hanny Wells gets to serve. She's got a couple aces today. I think that Liberty Benton, after that first set, you know, they... they realize, you know, we're in a tough situation here with these guys. We need to put them away early if we can. And we get Wayne Trace out of alignment. 19-7. Good serve. Yep. Yeah, great serve. Ooh, yeah. Left hand there. I'm going to guess that's Kathleen Stoller. She wears number 25 in the program. And uh, I'm looking down the bench, looking for a 25, trying to figure out who this might be. Now, there's a 25 down there. Is there? Yep, right in the middle. Well, that's blocked as the net. Wayne Trace gets back-to-back -back points. And makes it 19-9. And he well sets. That point will go to Sophia Barbara. Makes it 20-9. Liberty Bent with a good opportunity here. Just put this one away, get a little bit of rest in between before they have to take on Kaleida. Five points away from making it to the finals today as Maddie Amstutz entered. She's got three aces and had a good serve effort right there. It's blocked at the net. And off a blocker, that point will go to Harper Meyer. Harper Myers makes it 20 to 10. Caitlin Slade coming in to serve. 11 aces coming into today. Nestrick hits. She gets a point. 21 10.
And Ellie Norman will serve. Good serve. Good hard, low serve. Oh, big left hand there. And a good block at the net. Give that point to Lexi Moore. It's 21-11. And the libero. Caroline Winans to serve. And her serve misses. It's 22-11. And that will allow Emily Ike to re-enter, along with Celeste Taylor will be in. Celeste will get to serve. The hardest points are always the last three or four. Celeste Taylor's a sophomore. Where's number four with that serve? Here's the set. Blocked. I got that one. Good diving oh, play. Nice play. Yeah. Just couldn't score off of it. Really nice diving effort by Maddie Amstutz, but couldn't keep the ball in play. Makes it 22 12. And Paige Albert enters. Like I said, there's a, those last few points are always the hardest to get. It seems like you've you got a nice run going and then. It just kind of fizzles out a little bit. Nestrick. Winans. Kel, good diving effort, keeps that one alive. Played over by the setter, Hornish. Hornish will set that one. And just tipped to an open area by Winans. Ike plays it over, free ball. See what the Raiders do with this one. And they get a kill. Big hit out of the middle. That will go to Tori Sin. Tori's had a nice match today. Makes it 22-13. And Wayne Trace going back again, Mark. Paige Albert. I'll tell you. Yep, when she serves, they seem to be able to score some points, don't they? Yes, they certainly do. Paige, senior setter. 23-13 Eagles. And we're going to get a couple of substitutions. Looks like number uh, 12, Megan Gherkin, and number 13, Ali Hokuson, will both enter. LB trying to close this one out. Getting a few players in there that haven't played too much today. And a little heads up officiating. Trying to make sure everybody entered in the proper position on the floor. Appreciate that. Here's the serve. Hokinson. That's blocked in the net by oh, Ike. Nice job. Yeah, good job by her. She gets up and Emily climbed the ladder and blocked it back. And here is LB, a point away from getting to the finals. Float serve. Just got it over. That's going to be That's it. it. Liberty Benton flexed their muscles, had a really nice second set today to go along with the first set. That means they will take the two sets, both by a score of 25-13. They will be in the finals, Dar. That's coming up just a moment. That should be a good match with Kaleida. Yeah, I think it will be. And, you know, Liberty Benton came out in this, in this particular match, you know, with guns blazing, but they couldn't keep it going for a while there. Wayne Trace made a nice little comeback for a while. But it was inevitable that you'd see uh, Liberty Benton win this one and go on to play Kaleida. That is the case as we have finished both sets at 25-13. Short break for us here in the gym, but not for you. Stay tuned because we've got the finals coming up. It'll be Kaleida. It'll be Liberty Benton in the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament Finals. You're coming up right after this. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. Good afternoon and welcome to Kaleida High School. It is the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament and we are set for the finals match today. The Combe Standing Kaleida Wildcats, they will host the Liberty Benton Eagles. My name is Mark Schein. It's my pleasure to do play-by-play. -play. Alongside your color commentary, Mr. Dark Evergold. Dark, couple teams on a roll, both playing pretty well and they're in the finals. Yeah, they certainly are. You know, Clyde had off a little bit of a slow start in their first, you know, match, but they came back and win that one there in Liberty Benton. Same way with them, you know, against a pretty decent outing by Wayne Trace, but 
boy, the second game, they just dominated in that one there. So, yeah, I expect this to be a really good game. And we were talking about the size advantage that Liberty Benton has in, in, the, in their volleyball team. But you look at Clyde's team, and they got a pretty good sized girl over on their side, too. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Delphi St. John's was the opening match loser to Liberty Benton. That was 25 22, 25 16. Then uh, Liberty Benton came also back and beat Wayne Trace 25 13, 25 13. The Clyde Wildcats, they defeated Bath early on 25 15, 25 14. Then a really interesting three set match you saw here on WOSM. 25-22 in the opening set against St. Mary's. Then St. Mary's won set two, 17 to 25. And then Kaleida came back in the final set, 25-22. And we are ready for the finals action as Addison Allen Huber serves to get this one started. And the opening point will go to Lindsey May. Yeah, Lindsey May, a five foot ten junior. You now she had before this day started 52 kills, and you can see why. But she just hammered it down from there. Very good balance on this Liberty Benton team. We'll try to give you some of the numbers through their Wednesday night match. That's the last match they play prior to the day as Alyssa Henny Wells serves that ball. This ball goes cross court and will be a point to Olivia Meyer. We're tied at one early on. Our scoreboard today is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, as it has been all day. We're 1-1 with Kaleida serving here in the opening set. This is the young lady who just scored, Olivia Meyer, to serve. And he wells to set, and that kill will go to Sophia Barbara. Sophia was a third-team all-conference player in the BBC a year ago. So was Alyssa Handy-Wells. Lauren Gherkin was a first-team all-conference player in that conference, the Blanchard Valley Conference, last year. Here's Handy-Wells to serve. Nice serve. That it was. And that's a big hit. That will go to Malia Romez. And you talked about the 6'2 sophomore earlier, Dar. She is the size and a big hitter for the Colada Wildcats. And they use her a lot. So they, they have her rumbling around a lot on that front line, doing a lot of sliding around to get her open as much as they can. Ryan Eberg serves. We're tied at two. Set. Good play by... Oh, almost a good play. Maria Gurdon got it set up, and Romez hit it long. It is 3-2, Eagles. And just as we thought it would be, it's really going to be a back-and-forth match. It's one of these teams is really going to have to take control. Here's Barber to serve. Gurdon sets. Romez hits it long. It is 4-2, Eagles. Well, we have a chance. Maria Gurdon a year ago set the school record for 674 assists during the season. As serviced by Barber again, and that's an ace. 5-2. Sophia Barber had the three aces through Wednesday night. That's her first in this particular match. 5-2 Eagles. And she's really played well all day today. She has, that's correct. Here's Gerding set. And Roma's block at the net. Good block that time. Check it up to Riley Nestrick. Gerding had that set. If she gets 35 more sets, which may be difficult today in a three-set match, but certainly over the course of the season, she'll have 2,000 sets That's of, uh, assists for her career. Hit was by Whitney Unverfirth. This will be Nestrick again, and she scores. Five consecutive points the way of the Eagles. You want to something else about Maria Gerding? National Honor Society. Yeah. <laughs> Saw her name on the bulletin board out front. Why not? Yeah. Hey. I mean, Liberty Benton's off to a fast start, 7-2, and they really haven't had anything from Gerton yet. Deep serve past the end line. That will allow Whitney Unverfirth to serve. Set. Oh, big hit that time. You mentioned Lauren Gherkin. She was in the front row that time, but that one went to Cora DeHart. 8 2, 8 3. And that's the advantage that LLB has on a lot of teams is they've got Gherkin up there front, and everybody watches her and expecting her to be have the big hits. And then you got two other hitters, you know, flanking her on both sides that can lay it down, too. Here's Josie Todd to serve. 
Gerding sets that one, and that was unable to score that time. A little off the net, and Romas couldn't do anything with it. Our officials today on the stand is Jack Link. He's our R1 today. Our R2 is Ann Ellerbrock. Here's Todd to serve again. This hit will be by Huber. And that's Gherkin right there with that hit. And now Romus, and she buries it in the corner. Wow. 9-4. If you said Ann Ellerbrock, I thought she was a coach at uh, Ottawa Glen North, a very successful one. And you would be correct. Amber Gurneman has taken over that program, and Ann Ellerbrock is becoming a very good high school volleyball official and doing some college stuff, too. And that's going to fall on the floor for a point. 9-5. Just as we thought, you know, LB getting off to a fast start, but you can't count the Kaleida team out because they're going to come back on you if you let them hang. Romez, almost oh, nice. an ace. Really yeah. nice dig in the backcourt by Caitlin Erdeljack, but unable to keep it in the field of play for a teammate. Nice diving effort. 9-6. Eagles, as they change their serve, receive a bit. Romez serves again. Here's Todd set, and Gherkin's hit. That hit will be by Olivia Meyer. Here's a set by Erdeljack, and Hanny Wells hits Ooh. it into a block. Another set by Erdeljack, and that was hit by, uh, by Gherkin. Great digs by uh. And there if Gherkin put it away. You saw Caitlin Erdeljack, the libero, set that time three consecutive times. That's something a lot of teams are doing now. Let's use that libero not just as a defensive specialist, but as a uh, uh, offensive player, too. That ball was hit long. Actually, it's 7-9. And that goes off a blocker and a point. That time, the point goes to Cora DeHart. 10-7. Yeah, she's another one of the six-footers up front for Liberty Bent. And here is one of those, Lauren Gherkin, to serve. Girding sets. Hit. And just wide by Olivia Meyer. 11-7 Eagles. Eagles came in at 8-1. Kaleida came in at 7-1. It is 11-8 now. Bluffton was the only team to defeat Kaleida. That was the very first match of this season. Earl Jack bumps it up. Tip. Girding sets. Oh, good hit. Yeah, big hit that time by Lindsey May. And then LB gets the point out of it. 12-8 with Ertl Jack to serve, and Sophia Barbara enters. Now, Liberty Benton's had great success when Ertl Jack's been back there serving. She has an ace. Nope. Pancake that they kept it alive. Good play, Girding. And they get a point. Oh, wow. Maria Girding made a real nice save of the ball. Got it up in the air. The teammate got a point out of it. It is 12-9, Liberty Benton. Yeah, it really looked like she was going to have an ace on that one. Henny Wells with a tip and missed the sideline. 12-10. A little bit too fancy on that one there. She just needed to put it across. Served by Huber. And she's going to get a point for her team. And that quickly, you see him coming back. It's 12-11 now. Adeline Huber is a freshman. 36 kills, 13 aces. Annie Wells sets. That hit was by Celeste Taylor. No, excuse me, that was not Celeste, that was Lindsey May. And that Third. ball almost hit your cat up there, Mark. Yeah, it did, didn't it? 13 11. Annie Wells to serve. 193 assists for her already this season in 26 sets. 
Myrtle Jack saves it. Another big hit by Lindsey May. Back to a three-point lead. It's 14-11. Yeah, Lindsey May, that five foot ten junior, and boy, I tell you what, you set her up like that, get it up high enough for her, and just bring it down, you're in trouble. Andy Wells serve. That will be an ace for her. Her first third of the day. She had two earlier today, and we're going to get a timeout for the Kaleida Wildcats. They trail by four early on. You're watching high school volleyball on WOSN. Our scoreboard today is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Our scoreboard has 15 for the Liberty Benton Eagles, 11 for the Kaleida Wildcats. Coach Mary Kortokratz takes her first time out for the Wildcats, trailing by four. And Alyssa Handy-Wells will serve again. Girding sets from the back row. That was by Catherine Kraus. And it hit in the middle. That's Barbara. Barbara, yes, it was. 16 11, four consecutive points. They had five points earlier to take it from a 2 2 tie to a 7 2 lead. Trying to pull five off again right here. Little Jack saves that one. And Gherkin from the back row. 16-12 Liberty Benton as Olivia Meyer will serve. She had an ace in the semifinals today. Nestrick hits. Tipped over by Romas. Oh, nice job. And she tried to get a left hand and couldn't right there at the net with her with Sophia Barbara. And Barbara gets the point. I'll tell you, Mark, I've been impressed with Barbara all day long. She has played well at the net. She played well when she's serving the ball as well. Third team all-conference player a year ago in the Blanchard Valley Conference. Maddie Amstutz served that ball. There she is again. Yep. Ryan Nieberg hit the ball. It got blocked back and blocked out of bounds. It's 17-13. Nienberg serves again. Good serve. Handy Wells sets. There's your player again. Yep. Sophia Barbara. I'll tell you what, she's done a great job. DeHart enters, and then Barbara gets a break. Ellie Norman, and uh, she are on a string. Norman plays in the back row. Barbara plays in the front row. So when the rotation occurs, it's term time for Norman to serve. Romez. It's saved in the back row by Norma, just came in. And then Romez at the net makes a play. Oh, we got a, a Liberty Bent Eagle was in the net too while that occurred, so the point was going to go to Kaleida either way. A really good timing there by Romez just to get up there and just get a hand on it the way she did. Whitney Unverfirth serves. Whoa. Whoa. About that hit by Gherkin. <laughs> oh. That's Spent the one you just watch it go by. There's nothing you're going to do yeah. to stop it. Ever since it was 16-11, Liberty Benton, we've been point for point. So the lead stays at five. And jo Josie Todd enters to serve. The junior. Girding sets. Romez again. That one's blocked and blocked out of bounds. Seen that a couple of times here. They get those hands turned around and pointed towards the floor. Here's Romez to serve. Malia. Hanny Wells hits, but she hits it right to Unverfer. Whitney saved that one. Here's a hit and knocked out of bounds by Olivia Meyer. Kirk going back to serve now for Liberty Benton. But what we've seen so far in, the, in this match is, is a lot of hard hits. Girding sets. 
The hit by Meyer sailed out of bounds. Six point lead for the Eagles with Gherkin to serve again. Good serve. Good save on that yeah, one, though. Yeah, keep it alive. Gerding has to free ball it over, but does so well. And then a big hit out of the middle by Cora DeHart. And Eagles have scored three consecutive points. They will take a seven-point lead, and we're going to take a break here in the action. You can check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and more teams than anyone else in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN TV. And beside us running the cameras all day today is Jacob O'Neill. He and Kelsey Beimer do a great job of doing that. The negative, he took the last piece of pizza oh. from the concession stand. So during the consolation match, I settled for a pretzel. A good pretzel, yep. but yep. he had the so. last piece of pizza. Um, he's proving what type of person he is. He didn't share, didn't even consider oh, it. Gee, no, of course, but it's a good thing he does a good work with his camera work and his good work at putting us all together and technology and everything else. He's a good dude around here, and so is Kelsey, and we appreciate their efforts today. We also appreciate a seven-point lead by Liberty Benton. Two timeouts now for the Colorado Wildcats. Liberty Benton like to put this one away real quick. Girding will set. Hit. A hit was done by Huber, and we're going to get illegal contact. And the timeout succeeds in breaking the momentum, at least momentarily, cutting the lead from seven to six as Maria Girding serves. Todd sets. Andy Wells tries to save it. It's touched. We're going to keep playing. And she got the point out of it. Yeah. The official said the ball was touched at the net. And so it did not end up being a four-hit situation. Said the point will go to Liberty Benton. I can tell you from experience, when the ball is that close to you and you're on the up official, it's really hard to see because it's it too is. close to you. Yeah. And uh, Good call that time by Jack Link. That's a big hit by Riley Nieberg. Great Keep playing. Save. Yes, it was. Nieberg again, and she bounds that one into the floor. Persistence for Ryan Nieberg gets a point for her team. Adeline Huber serves. Right now with Roaming out of there, she's going to have to take the charge out there. And we have some discrepancy in what the score should be. We're going to check that out. And we're looking at lineups, too, and see who's on the floor. We'll have a momentary break. It is 23-17 in our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. And we're having some conversation with the Liberty Benton bench. And so they're going to get a card for having the wrong. Oh, they didn't sub properly. That's what happened. Ah. So now we get to sub in. The situation was Barbara and uh, Norman. So it's a delay of game type action. It's the first one's a warning type situation, so it's still a six-point game. Here's a serve by Huber. Hanny Wells sets. Sophia Barbara puts it away, and we are at set point here in the opening set. Eagles try to take a 25-17 victory early on. Here comes Riley Nestrick back in the game. Liberty Benton's doing a great job of setting up their big hitters up front. I mean, just getting it up high enough for them to get an elevation and bring it down. Almost an ace by Hanny Wells. Instead, it's going to be played over by Maddie Unverfirth, the libero. Block. Good block at the net. Here's a set again. And free ball it over. Oh, and it's going to oh fall. Oh, my. The Kaleida Wildcats surrounded it but didn't play it. Our opening set goes to the Liberty Benton Eagles 25-17. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at Kaleida High School. We're in the finals of the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament. Liberty Benton has taken the opening set, 25-17. Our semifinal match today, Kaleida defeated St. Mary's. 
Liberty Benton defeated Wayne Trace, and in our consolation match, St. Mary's was able to defeat Wayne Trace, so they will be the third place team today. The other action is going on in, in the St. Michael's gym, and we're not quite sure how all that's going to play out today, but we do know the results of the consolation, and soon we will know the results of the finals here today. We're pleased to announce a new pricing for the WSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WSN from anywhere, anytime. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv. It's also available on Roku and Apple TV. And right out of the shoot, we get a nice shot by Barbara that's played. This will be under first, and she puts it away, does Whitney. Kaleida with an opening lead. Kaleida never led in the opening set. It was tied at 2-2. Two to two. Liberty Benton won on a five-point run. Kaleida did have a four-point run later on. Here's Hanny Wells to set. And oh, a nice block. Good block at the net. How about Whoa. that? Riley Niebuhr climbed the ladder and makes it 2-0 Wildcats. That looked like that was going to be a perfect slam down for, for Liberty Benton. And boy, she got up there to block that one. Here's Olivia Meyer serve again. Annie Wells saved it, but I think she illegally contacted it. She did. You could see that her right hand was below her left hand, and the pass was a little bit long, and so she contacted it twice. Light off to 3 0 lead in this one. Diving play by Earl Jack and then a tip and missed out. the sideline. Barbara thought she had a spot, did, but just couldn't quite get the ball where she wanted it to go. And the first four points of set two go to Kaleida. Annie Wells sets. Not that time. That ball was put away by Vanessa Taylor. And ends the first four-point run that the Kaleida Wildcats have. Maddie Amstutz will enter. And when she does, Lindsay May sits down. And yeah, Taylor had 11 kills coming into this today. That was Elise Romez. I'm excuse me, Malia Romez announcing her presence with authority. I stole that out of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, why not? Riley Nieberg to serve. Barbara hits. Good play by Nieberg to keep it alive. Here's Gerdington to play it over. Here's the free ball. Wells to set. set. Gerken tips. The libero, Matty Unferth, had to play that one and set it and did so well. Here's Gerken to hit, and oh. Lauren Gerken missed. I said Elise Romez a moment ago because I was thinking of the fact she is injured and unable to play today, and hopefully she gets well and gets back on the floor soon. Here's Ryan Nienberg to serve. Almost an ace, but a good play by Earl Jack. There's a big hit by Gherkin, but played in the back row by Katherine Krause. Gherkin again just tips it this time. Good effort by Nienberg, but unable to legally play the ball and goes sideways off her hand at 6-2. Well, that's where the big girls up front can be so dangerous because, you know, they they can hit it hard, and stuff, and, but then they can turn around and just finesse it over the net on you. Barbara serves. Here's Romez off of two blockers. And she gets another point for her team. It is 7-2 Wildcats. She's... When they put her in there and she roams up and down that net the way she does, you know, it really makes a big difference for their offense. And missing the back line with that hit was DeHart. It is 8-2 Wildcats. Whitney Unverfer to serve again. <laughs> and hitting through a block is Gherkin. Romez was up there along with a teammate, but the ball went sideways off their hand. It's 8-3. Josie Todd enters. And she will be the setter in the back row as that will allow Alyssa Hanny Wells to move to the front row and become a hitter. 
Blocked. Andy Wells tips it back up. Erdeljack will set Gherkin. Gerding gets to it, and that one outside the antenna. And for the first time in this set, Liberty Benton will score two consecutive points. And again, Gerton just kind of finessing it over the net. She didn't have to hit that hard. Just find an open area. The pass wasn't successful. It's 8-5. Good service opportunity here for Josie Todd. Try to get off that big lead, but the Liberty Benton fighting on its way back right now. Girding sets. Romez, a point off a blocker. It is 9-5. Do you think that uh, Maria Girding and Malia Romez spend any time working together? No, not yeah, much. I think not they much. probably do. Here's yeah. Malia to serve. And she gets an ace. Double them up at 10-5. Have the Wildcats. She had nine aces through their Lincoln View match this week. First one here in the uh, finals. Annie Wells had two blockers up there, Girding and Huber, and she still scored. Well, like I said, you watch it, you watch these matches and stuff, and you see them out there, and there's some great volleyball out there. But all the hours of practice that these te you know, teams have to go through. I think we're going to have to check the scoreboard because I I think both coaches are looking at the scoreboard. It says 10-6 now, and I don't think that's right. We're going to hang on a second with that. Hanny Wells hits and blocked. Right there at the net were Huber and Nienberg. That's correct. It is now 11-6. I think we got things straightened out now. It's free balled over. Collider with a chance. Nieber gets it blocked. Oh, look at that. And a couple of uh -huh. efforts to get there, but unable to. Corey DeHart will get the point. Make it 12-7. Barbara enters. What a good volley there between the two teams. I mean, just keep the ball alive. Good play by Girding out of the net. But then Olivia Meyer wasn't able to successfully get it over. It's 12 8. Hurdlejack, good serve. And that will be Huber's hit for a point. 13 8. And that will allow Adeline Huber to serve. She has 13 aces in this young season. Kalida <laughs> keeps yeah, it alive. Yeah. Hannywell sets again. Barbara hits again. And the block goes out of bounds. I think that, I think that hit back there on that one, Mark, was self-defense. 13-9 <laughs> Eagles. Riley Nestrick will be in the left front as she just checked in. And we're going to get a yellow card against Liberty Benton over uh, how they substituted. And we're going to have a, con a conversation between the captain, that would be Lauren Gerken and our official, and she's going to go over and explain to Coach Todd what this is all about. And I'm guessing is they're running substitutes in too quick and not giving it a chance to be officially uh, beckoned yeah. in. I'm, we're going to have a little bit of a conversation now between our two officials and check out exactly what's going on. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for us to broadcast. Say thanks to viewer-supported TV44 by sending a financial gift. TV44 relies on the donations of viewers to enable airing this game and other locally produced programs. Donate now at WTLW.com and click Donate. It is 13-9 on our Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. And we're still this time the conversation is with Coach Kortokratz. And I think just maybe explaining what's going on here with the scoring. 
Did we not have one yellow card already? If yes, we do, we I, did. I'm, this might be a point that's going to go the way of Kaleida. Let's see what the scoreboard does. I wasn't sure exactly what the first one was all about, so let's see. Uh, Well, we're ready to play volleyball. It looks like it's going to stay 13 to 9. So we'll, okay. we'll pretend to be confused up yeah, here we, because we are. We are. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> There's no, yeah. no pretend here. Here's Hattie Wells to serve. She will set Unverfirth. And here comes the hit back, and you're running right alongside the tape, and falling is a shot from Lindsay May. It's 13-10. Yeah, they do a nice job of setting Lindsey May up and coming across from that left to right. Annie Wells. Girding sets. That one's blocked at the net. Well, you can give it to May, you can give yeah, it to Barbara. Give it to either one. Of them. Yeah, they're both there and both got contact. 13 11. Eagles were down 4 0, and they've come back to within two. Overpass. Girding saves it, and the ball is out of bounds, though, hit by Riley Nieberg. Four consecutive points have gone the way of the Eagles. They're trying to knot it up here at 13. If this serve from Wells can be uh, successful. Henny Wells to serve. Oh, good serve, good serve. And she gets an wow. ace. That ties it at 13. Good hard low serve right over the net. She had two aces in the semifinals. She's got two here in the finals. Okay, I think I know what this one's all about. They're, they're concerned that if the serve is going directly over top, the three girls in the middle, you're blocking the view of the serve. I'll explain that more in just a second. Kneebird tips. Set by Erdeljack. This set will be by Unverfirth. Hanny Wells will set. And that will be a point. And just that quickly, Liberty Benton has now take the lead. The defense has to move, first of all. If they still can't see serve, then you ask the official to reposition the uh, serving team. Ah. So I think that's what that's all about. The defense has to move first, and if they don't, still can't see properly because of how the D offense is set up, and we're going to get a timeout. Timeout will go to the Kaleida Wildcats. Eagles run a run. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. We're back at Kaleida, the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament. Our scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. And don't forget your sweet tea when you do it. That's absolutely <laughs> correct. Liberty Penn's on a seven-point roll right here and have taken a two-point lead. See if Kaleida can get it stopped. Nieberg hits, and she does. It was a good dig by Gherkin, but not enough. So seven consecutive points comes to an end following the timeout. And Olivia Meyer serves. Good serve. That's an ace. And we're tied at 15. Olivia Meyer had an ace in the semifinals, and now she has won the finals today. Set, Barbara hits. This is going to be set for Nieberg, and she hits it to Erdeljack. Set, Unverfirth pushes it over and oh, finds a spot. My goodness. Whitney Unverfirth put the ball right where it needed to be to score a point, and her team's come back with three consecutive points to take a one-point lead following the timeout. Good field of vision right there to find that open spot, boy. Meyer serves. This will be a set. Nestrick hits. That's in. It is for a fact. And Riley Nestrick has a point. It is tied at 16. 
And you can see the Eagles making very sure that they yeah, hold they, that they. substitution correctly. 16 all. Long 17 16 Kaleida. Ryan Nieberg will serve the senior. 13 aces coming into today. And he well sets. Lauren Gurka and tips it to an open spot. We're tied at 17. And that's your senior out there. Again, good field, good vision there to see an open spot. Realize all you have to do is tap it over and find that little hole right there. Barbara serves. Romez hits. Nestrick again. And dumped over by Girding. Good job keeping it alive. Barbara has to free ball it. Here's Romez again, and that's blocked. Gherkin got it. This will go to the other side to Unverfirth, and she gets a point. Whitney Unverfirth, really nice job by Maria Gerding to choose a different place to set it and put her team up one when Unverfirth put it away. And you can see the talent on both these teams being displayed right now. Each with a single loss coming into today. Eagles had lost to Northview. Wildcats had lost to Bluffton. Gherkin hits. Gerding's going to set again. This is Huber hits it over. And tipped out of the middle by Gherkin. Here's Huber again. Hits it into the block and then plays it. She's going to get another opportunity. Hits it off a block again. Oh, good dig. Gherkin, or excuse me, Gerding went and got that one. Here's Hanny Wells to set again. This will be DeHart, and she got it in the corner. Tied at 18 on a really good point played by both teams. Josie Todd will enter now. And Josie serves. Huber. Gherkin. Romez, but a great play oh, by Earl Jack. Oh, look out. And then wow. Humber first chased that one down. That was tipped at the net. Romez hits another one. That one's played. Here's Huber. Oh, what a great volley. That time, Romez sets, hits it to Erdeljack. And Kaleida wins another outstanding point. What a great volley between those two. That it was, 1918, Kaleida. The type of play you would expect in the championship match of the Pioneers Day Invitational. It's just great digs and hits on both sides. Romez serves. Here's Todd will set. Hanny Wells hits it into the net. It's 2018 Wildcats. Timeout, Liberty Benton at 2018. This is their first timeout. Gonna regroup themselves. This set started with Kaleida on a 4-0 run. We went back and forth, back and forth, and then Liberty Benton went on a 7-0 run. Since that time, it's just kind of been back and forth, and we're up to Kaleida up two now, 2018. I hope you like this volleyball here on Sunday night on WOSN. If you're watching the initial broadcast of it, our goal is to kind of give you either Sunday night volleyball or Sunday night soccer, kind of between the NFL Brett branches yeah. on Sunday. The 4 o'clock game's coming to an end, and the 8.15, 8.30 game has not started yet, so we're kind of getting some volleyball and or soccer for you on Sunday nights on WSM. We hope that you appreciate that. Can't get enough sports. <laughs> Kaleida trying to send this to set three. Malia Romez serves.
Unverfurth got that one. That was to Huber. Unverfurth again, and this will go to Romez behind the 10 foot line and. The ball falls on the side of the Kaleida Wildcats. It is 2019. And back to serve will be Lauren Gherkin. And the intensity of this one's ratcheting up yeah. real quick. That would be a dead solid fact. Here's the set that will go to Meyer. 21-19. Gonna sub in. This will be Riley Nienberg's time to go into the front row, and she replaces Caitlin Roof, who's been the back row player in that rotation. Set. Here's Gerding to set again. Meyer finds an open spot. It is 22 19 on the back set. That's a perfect hit, too, right on that back line. Here is the second timeout that will go to the Liberty Benton Eagles. Scoreboard today brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. They catered our uh, announcer dinner last spring. That's pretty good, wasn't it? Oh, it yeah, was, it was really it was good. great. Yeah. So four out of the last five points have gone the way of... The Kaleida Wildcats it was tied at 18, and now it is 22-19, and Kaleida's Maria Girding will serve. Liberty Benton's out of timeouts. Kaleida has one left in this set. Good serve. Diving effort, but unable to yep. keep it in play to a teammate by Maddie Unverfurth. The timeout succeeds. It is 22-20 now. And with that, Caitlin Erdeljack will serve. LB has a lot of success when Erdeljack back there serves. But not that team. time. Not she that missed, time. Yep, she she missed, yep, missed the back line. Not by much, but she did so. Here's Kaleida, two points away from going to set three with Adeline Huber to serve. Set. Hit, Barber shots block, Erdeljack plays it though. Here's Girding. Niebert hit it over. That Mays ball is hit. It's blocked out of bounds and it will be a Liberty Benton Eagle point. It is 23-21. Comes Catherine Krause in the game and she takes Huber's place as Krause will go to the back row. Well, this is just what we expected, Mark. Two yeah. great teams out there battling out. Runs going back and forth. Here's Handy Wells to serve. This is going to go to Whitney Unverfurth. Barbara hits. Gerding got it. Meyer puts it over. Here's Gerding to set again. Unverfurth just has to tip it across Wells with a diving play. Erdeljack will set. That will be May who hit that one. Unverfurth is going to hit this one. May again. Diving play. Oh, look out. Saving the back row by Kraus. Barbara hits. That ball was played by Maddie Unverfurth, and then Ruth uh, by Kraus plays it over. Barbara hits. It's blocked back, and Kaleida wins the point. That's two long volleys we've seen. Kaleida's gotten points out of both of, both of them, but I'll tell you what. I don't even know how they even hit some of those balls. 24-21 Kaleida. Olivia Meyer trying to serve out the set and send it to set three. Diving play in the back row. Erdeljack hits it over. It's blocked to the net by Romez, and she gets a That's point it. out of it. Wow. The Kaleida Wildcats will come back to take set two at 25-21. The third set of the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament Championship match coming up next. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. It's the championship match of the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament here in Kaleida. We 
are going to go to set three. The opening set went to Liberty Benton, 25-17. And Kaleida came back to win set number two, 25-21. Mark Schein and Dar Nevergal here. And you might expect going to a championship match, going to three sets, Dar. Well, that's the way it should be. But, you know, I would tell you, uh, that, you know, two great teams out there, and you saw some volleys that just were unbelievable between the two of them. And, you know, some of those hits that they were getting, you know, some of them were defensive more or less, but a lot of them just being in the right spot, right time, getting a hand on it, volleying it back over and just keeping it going. Just, you know, I don't know. That was just great volleyball. We should mention, for those of you who are new to our volleyball telecast, typically the deciding set is to play to 15, but not in a three-set match, such as what we play in Invitationals today. So we will play all the way to 25, win by two in this particular set. This will be the eighth set today for the Kaleida Wildcats. They defeated Bath 25-15, 25-14. Then they went three sets with St. Mary's, and this will be the third set here with Liberty Benton. This will be the seventh set of the day for Liberty Benton. They defeated Delphi St. John's in two, Wayne Trace in two, and of course this will be the third set here today. If you're looking ahead, the Kaleida Wildcats will be at Continental on Tuesday, at Ayersville on Thursday, and Liberty Benton will be at Arlington this week. That is on the 13th. Here we go, service beginning by Adeline Huber, set three. And May goes up and gets her team started off right. Lindsay May scores the first point. They like to go to Lindsay May again, coming from that left to right. She kind of has a good spot over there. Here's Alyssa Handy Wells to serve. And we've got some discussion going on between our official and uh, Julie Todd. And we're ready to play volleyball. Get a sub in, first of all, because Catherine Kraus has to take the place of Adeline Huber. It's a front row, back row exchange. And well serves, Girding will set. And a swing and a kill for Olivia Meyer. We're tied at one. Olivia Meyer enters. Olivia Meyer serves, I should say. Oh, Nestrick, big hit wow. from her. She had 15 kills coming in today. Here's Amstutz for May. Maddie will head to the back row and serve. She's got three aces in the semifinals. Fall falls over, but Gerding gets to it. Here's Romez, diving play. They're going to keep it alive. They are. Good set. And Riddle Jack's there to play that one. And a great save by Hanny Wells and a put away at the front by Barbara. That was really well done by LB. It certainly was. And again, Barbara being able to put it down. And, you know, again, a nice volley back and forth between the two teams. Very difficult set by Alyssa Handy Wells and very well done. Here she serves. Good serve. Girding plays it out of the net, however, is pushed over by Maddie Underfirth. Oh, Underfirth yeah. tried to save it, but there's Barbara with a play at the net. Barbara had a saw a little opening right there, and she took it. This is reminiscent of the first two sets where somebody jumps out front and then it ends up being a battle down the Ooh, line. Whoa. Chalk and ace up to Alyssa Hanny Wells. She rifled that one in there. Yeah, right between two defenders down there. Five one Eagles, four consecutive points. Their only loss this year was a five set match. Excuse me, a three-set oh. match to Northview, and she did it again. Just here was a different side that time. Yeah. Fischel was waiting for his line judges to make a call. They finally did. 
five consecutive points have been scored by Liberty Benton. We're going to get a quick timeout from Kaleida. You're watching High School Volleyball, WOSN. Scoreboard today is brought to you by Lee's Famous Rescue Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delta, San St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Rescue Chicken, home style, happens here. Mark Shinedar never go. Points by Liberty Benton. Get this started here. Take a five point lead, and there's going to be a shot to the score. Coming out of the timeout. Yeah, her serve that time, she just kind of floated over after those two rifles down either, each side of the line. Ryan Nieberg will serve. And she gets an ace. Timeout showing some benefits. Her first ace in this match. And, and second one, back to back. Ryan Nieberg, a senior, she had uh, 37 kills, 13 aces, two assists, and 28 digs prior today in their first six matches. Here's Gherkin, just tips it to an open area. Nieberg makes a play on it, but the teammates aren't able to keep it in play, and it becomes an LB score at a, a seven to four. Here's Ellie Norman will check in. She will go back to serve. Leo Romez yep. puts that away. Finds some wood with that one, makes it 7-5 in favor of the Eagles. And Whitney Underfirth will serve. Yeah, that's tough to, to block when she gets up that high. Andy Wells will set. Gherkin. Gherkin pounded uh -huh. the ball into Caitlin Roof. And scores a point, 8-5. And Josie Todd will come in. It's her turn to serve and then set from the back row. And that's what Gherkin is known for. Is, you know, get it up there and she'll hammer it really hard. And one of the premier ladies basketball players in our area yep. as well. Romez gets her shot blocked. Gherkin's there. So is uh, Cora DeHart. Four-point lead. DeHart's just a freshman, too. Gertie. Huber, big hit from her, but played in the back row that time by Amstutz. Ertlejack plays it over. Slide play, and a point. Malia Romez. I'll tell you, Mark, they've been successful with that yep. all day long. Difficult to defend when it's yep. executed properly, and they've done a good job with that today, and now Malia Romez to serve. Here's Gherkin. <laughs> Look out. Yeah. If it's homecoming week and the coach tells you to block that, you say nope, because I'm not going to homecoming pictures with bruises That's on my face. That's right. I'm just going to step out of the way. Lauren Gherkin will serve. Her team is up four, thanks to a five-point run they had early in this set. Huber hits it long. Liberty Another Benton, run. Liberty Benton led 6-1. Now they built it back to a five-point lead again at 11-6. Here's Huber. That time she scores. 11-7. Rodney Nieberg checks in to play in the front row. She and Caitlin Roof are on that back row, front row substitution string. Oh, banged it over with the left hand. Yeah. May did, or excuse me, Kirkin did that, but then we get a big hit out of the front row, and here comes Kaleida again. Neither team wants to lose this. I'll tell you what, they've been battling like this since the first set. 
Winding up with a big hit that time out of the middle by Corey DeHart, but it's blocked. And it's blocked long. Yeah, Goliath thought they had the point on that yep. one there. And it was close on that side. Had a couple of good blockers up there on DeHart, but the ball did go long, and now Ertljack will serve. Looks it to her counterpart, Underfirth. Cousin Whitney hits it over. And then plays that one. Here's Huber. Good dig, good dig. May Oof. hits it. They keep it alive, they did. And just free balled over, but a good save by Kaleida. Here's Gherkin oh, from behind the 10 foot up. line, hit it into the net. 12-9, Liberty Benton. Huber serves. May again, this time a little softer. Here's Nieberg in the front row, but it's blocked. Sophia yep. Barbara. If you're on name an MVP for the Liberty Benton today, it would be Sophia Barber. She really has played well, as have a lot of girls on both teams today. She does stand out. Here's Alyssa Handy Wells to serve. Well, it had to be played by Katherine Krause and then free balled over. Handy Wells short set. And Barber tipped that one and rolled along the top of the net and it counts as a point. You know, like I said, a lot of times your net, the net is your extra player out there if you can get it to roll down like that. Andy Wells will serve. Here's Whitney over for this block. Barbara got that one. Her string of outstanding play continues. And it's a six-point lead for the first time here in set three. Dirting will set. Meyer gets her shot blocked at the net. This will be set for Meyer again. She two ball hands it over and did so illegally. Liberty Benton racking them up now. 16-9. They have scored six out of the last seven points. Five out of the last six points, excuse me. Here's Nieberg in the center, and she gets a block. I hit off the blocker, Barbara, to stop that run. So a five-point run early in the set, a four-point run right there by Liberty Benton, and they're up six. Let's see if Olivia Meyer can start a collider comeback. Barbara, block. Oh, block. Nieberg. Nieberg got that one. Perfectly timed. That young guy in the corner is a pretty good ball hawk. You know that? Yeah, yeah. He He's yeah. pretty good. And he gets it right back to the girls instead yeah. of hogging it like most little boys do. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Olivia Meyer again. Set. No, Barbara free balls it over, trying to catch him unawares. Gomez oh, gets it. But yeah, Earl Jack saved that one. Nestrick shots block. Here's a set. Hammer. Barbara pushes it to the open spot. Good, good. Good vision by Barber to just find that open spot, just kind of push it right into that there. The, the, the real deal with that is you got to do it quick enough that yep. it's not prolonged contact and you get it where you want it to go with control. She's done that very well today. 17 11. And the serve goes long. Nieberg going back to serve now for Kaleida, and they really need a rally. Little Jack, Hanny Wells, Gherkin. Nope. Yep, missed the sideline. Good effort, missed the sideline. 17 13. Kaleida hanging in there, still trailing by four. Here's Rod and Nieberg to serve. Barbara tipped it to an open spot and hit the antenna on the diving effort by Rod and Nieberg. 18-13. Yeah, Clyder really needed to, you know, to get some extra points on that, that particular set, and they didn't do it. Here's Vanessa Taylor in. Vanessa will serve.
Has to be bumped over by Whitney under Umberfirth. And Gerken hits out of the right corner for a point. It's back to a six-point lead. And the second timeout will go the way of Kaleida. We're going to take a break also. You're watching High School Volleyball on WOSN. TV44 and WSN are nonprofit organizations supported by viewers like you. Now's a great time to make a donation in any size as a way to say thank you for this sports broadcast. Go to WTLW.com and click donate here. Donations are accepted 24 hours a day. Visit WTLW.com. Six point lead, six points away from the match. And Romez says, not yet. 1914, Liberty Benton. Whitney Underforth will serve. Senior cousin Maddie that played a lot of volleyball today. That is the libero for Kaleida. And hit that was Gherkin. Looking to see if it stayed in bounds, and it did. 2014. So the thing with Liberty Benton is you see the size up front, but each one of those those girls played differently. I mean, Gherkin's a heavy hitter. You know, when she hits it, you got Barbara with a little more finesse, but she can hammer it down too. That's an ace. Chalk that one up to Josie Todd. And it's seven points for so the lead and four points away from the championship. You put Lindsey May on the outside, on you know, for them. Todd, float served. Gerding is going to set, and Romez swings and kills. 21-15, Romez will serve. They need some points. They certainly do. And she's been fairly successful when she's serving, too. That one dove across the net, and she gets an ace. 21-16. Gerken from behind the 10-foot line. Gerding will set Romez from behind the 10-foot line. Back to the middle of the floor, diving save. Maddie Amstutz with that one. This is going to be Huber. Oh, good job. And Gerken's going to free ball over and stay in the net. The last time it was a four-point deficit, it was 17-13. It's 21-17 now. Kaleida's on a three-point run. Good serve. And put it away. Mm. Hubert the net. What do we got? She was in the net when she contacted the ball. Hey, you can see the LB players yep. all saying, hey, hey, hey. Got a little bit excited. Saw that ball pop up at the net, and her swing took her into the net. So instead of it being a 21-18, it is 22-17. A huge swing right there with this late in the match. That was a Gherkin serve. Here's Huber. Meyer. And Olivia Meyer scores. Good point for Clyda. 22-18, and they get Riley Nienberg back in the front row. Maria Gerding will serve and then set from the back row. Todd sets. May hits and it's blocked out of bounds. So they use Lindsay May on that side over there. and Boy, she's effective when she comes across from left to right. And here comes Sophia Barber back in to play in the front row, and she has been a force today as Caitlin Erdeljack will serve. Meyer tips. Oh, it's kept oh. alive on a really nice play by May. Free balled over by Meyer. And nobody, nobody sees it sees to get it. to it. Ertel Jack had kind of got off the back end of the floor to trying to make the first play. And nobody was able to get back to that one. Here's Huber to serve. Gherkin from behind the 10-foot line. Bumped over by Girding. May winds up and okay. finds an open spot. How many of those have we yep. seen today? 
Liberty Benton with a seven point lead. They're a point away, or excuse me, a seven point lead. Got to add here a little bit. <laughs> with a five point lead. But looking at uh, set looking point at right Set here. point, match point, championship point. With Alyssa Hanny Wells to serve. Set. Meyer hits, is blocked. Nieberg hits it over, but did so illegally with prolonged contact. Wow. And Liberty Benton Eagles will take the third set and the championship, this one at 25-17. Just as they did in the opening set. Dart, we've had a wonderful day of volleyball today, and Liberty Benton will be the champions. And we've saw in a lot of great volleyball, too. A lot of great volleys back and forth between some very, very good teams. And, you know, Liberty Benton just had too much firepower, you know, in this one here. But I suspect Kalei is going to go have a great season. The Kaleida Wildcats will go to 7-2 and two on the season. They will be second here in their championship match at the, the Pioneer Days Invitational Tournament. But the championship will go to the Liberty Benton Eagles. They will move to 9-1 and one on the season, entering play this week at Arlington in the Blanchard Valley Conference. We want to thank our sponsor today, our scoreboard sponsor, Ben Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. We want to thank athletic director here, Adam Huber, just does a great job and helped put this entire tournament on today. We want to thank our crew today. It's been Kelsey Beimer, Jacob O'Neill, and back at the station, Megan Sherrick will edit this all together. We want to thank you for watching Liberty Benton, the champions of the Pioneer Days Invitational Volleyball Tournament with a win over the Kaleida Wildcats. You've been watching High School Volleyball on WOSN.